day four, right? You're a wagon, totally, by the way. I'm a wagon? Totally a wagon. A wagon? What a wagon mean? All right, welcome to day four of the World Athletics Championships, and you are tuned in to Sidious Mag Live with Chris Chavez, Kyle Merber, John Anderson, and we have our first guest, like right, right on hand. I mean, the vibes are just high right now, especially after nine medals yesterday. I mean, last night was one of the best nights of track and field I've ever watched in person, and then to have one of the stars joining us today. I bringing mean, the hardware too. We finally got to hold a gold medal for ourselves. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So we we are joined now by the uh, uh, one ten meter hurdles gold medalist reigning back to back world champion Grant Holloway. I appreciate it, man. Thank you so much. That's a smooth introduction. Yeah, I, 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 I wanted to say back to back. Two time world champion. Yeah, I used to say right. I used to say it in college, but then it's like, all right, you get to the pros. Don't say nothing about college, but definitely excited, man. Yeah, because your resume is just way too long at this point. But you're you're not done adding to it. No, not at all. I'm I'm. I, I'm still young. I feel like I'm still a beginner in this sport. I'm still learning each and every year. So it's just one of the things where you just keep continue just to build off of and, and just go. By the way, this is entirely crazy. So you are a two-time world champ mm -hmm. in the 110. And at, you are a one-time SEC outdoor. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you ran three it shows you. It shows Daniel you. Roberts got yeah, exactly. And, uh, and Devin, yep, Devin Williams. Yeah. So it shows you how. SEC exactly. Outdoor. Shows you how hard the SEC is. Two world championships. Like, how crazy is that? Uh, got, it does not seem right. You can't make it up. That's just how hard okay. the SEC is. It's so very competitive. This race was crazy before you guys ever even yeah, before raced. Before we even start, is that way I get a bottle of water? Yeah, yeah, yeah we'll get a bottle of water. We actually have started, awesome. but we can still get you the bottle yeah, of water. Yeah, yeah. yeah, There's no breaks here. We're in. You just did it live on TV, and it's great. Uh, so you're all settled in. I know you're supposed to focus on yourself. I'm already knowing. But then Hansel's gone. Yep. Like, you're just watching him, and he hurt himself. So we want to know, first off, how do we how do we uh, um, compartmentalize or how do I digest that material? All of a sudden, like this, that dude's not there. Thank you. Um, He's in just, the infield yeah, too. You're no, watching him. No, literally. So, I'll give you my point of view, and I'm just gonna get it out there so nobody nobody makes up anything or suspects anything. We walk out. Well, while we're in the call room, me like I have the utmost respect for Hansel Parchment. So I give him I give him a pound. I tell him respect. He says always, so we know that you know regardless of what happens at the end of this race, that's still that's still big bro. That's my mentor. I've watched him thousands of times. We start walking out. He sets his blocks. Well, obviously you got Jamaica right right behind us in our blocks. <laughs> you got Team USA going all the way down the side. So like you're hearing Devin, you're hearing Grant, you're hearing Jamaica, you're hearing Parchment. Like you just you you hear all this stuff going on, and then from there. He sets his blocks. I'm last one to set my blocks. Uh, he sets his blocks. He does his push out. I'm, I'm, my head is down looking at the track. I'm, I'm, I'm in my set position. And I hear, I hear a smooth, like, little tick. And then I hear a clatter. And then from that clatter, I see him grab his right hamstring or quad or I just, his right leg. I don't know what the, uh, what the, what the symptom mm -hmm. is. And he pulls off to the side. And it's starting to do introductions. He's still not there. And yeah, that was that was only the start. That was, <laughs> that was only the right. start of the of the craziness that was about to happen and then unfold for the last, for the next five minutes. Does, does that rattle you in any way? Like, or it's just like, no, you're here to show up and do your own thing. And all the noise at this point, you're used to the fans going crazy and yelling, and you know things happen all the time. Yeah, definitely. Uh, it, I don't want to say it rattled me, but it's it's. You don't you don't expect that at, in the world championship final uh, at, at that. So, I've I've been telling everybody in all my interviews. I hope Hansel's healthy because obviously, for me, I'm a, I'm a true competitor. I want to race everybody when they're at their best, regardless if I win or regardless if I if, if I lose. So you know, I I kind of sent him a message last night just saying like you know I. They can call me the world champ, but I feel like I'm not really the world champ in in a set because you know. The, the people that were supposed to be in the race wasn't there. At the end of the day, yes, I'm going to take my medal and run with it. I'm sure I will have a chance to to run against Hansel and Devin again. But it's just one of the things where, you know, un a series of unfortunate events happen, and uh, that that's what happened. I'm just looking real quick. I'm looking, They've got your name engraved on the back of it. Mm -hmm. They do not have who was not there, <laughs> right? It just says Grand Highway and Skull. Yep. You don't have to worry about the rest of that nope, stuff. Nope, not at all. Through. At the end of the day, history is history. History is history. But now you got to deal with the shakeup of all of a sudden 
Devin's like the field. These are two of the four real metal contenders, right? There Correct. were four dudes yep, in there that absolutely. you you're, that you got to worry. Or in your case, three, but there's four guys you're worrying about. And all of a sudden, he's gone in a situation where everybody watches it like that. That cat didn't move a blink. I 100 percent agree. And I know you'd said last night. You told him go over there and protest this thing. Yes, we were talking I, like the problem is there's nobody to protest to. You're talking to the computer. Yeah. You know, I, says this. My heart goes out to Devin because he's home and he's mm. at home, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. He's in the United States and he's at the University of Oregon. So, I mean, I'm next to Devin, just like I'm sitting next to John Anderson right now. And I can attest he did not move before the gun. I firmly believe something is wrong with the censors. I'm not going to start pointing fingers at, that, that, that things need to be changed. But I definitely feel Devin did not move. Obviously, the computer said it, it, it is. And like I said in the press conference last night, it's, it's athletics and, and shit happens. So, you know, my heart goes out to Devin. I didn't want to send him out like that to go to the NFL. I think he said he starts training camp on the 24th mm -hmm. or the 25th or something like that. So yeah. it's just one of the things, man. You know, Devin has had a, a very a high high, and now he's going through some low lows right now. So all we can do as Team USA, all we can do as fans and, and friends as Devin is just continue to support. And it's, it's not much we can really do. The race is over. He watched the race. He texted me after the race telling me congratulations. He said sorry about the fiasco. So <laughs> it's He's just, apologizing to yeah, you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, he put me and uh, Trey Cunningham in a, in a, in a text. So uh, it's just what it is, man. You know, athletics is athletics, and Forrest Gump said it best. I think shit happens. <laughs> now, last, uh, last year, right, obviously after the silver medal in uh, Tokyo, there was some level of disappointment. And then yesterday you – get the gold and so now you're at this high so if you're talking highs and lows like did you get back to the point that you wanted to or did you know some of this take a little bit of the the oh, glory away it, it i don't think it, winning a world championship has its own realm um definitely last year yes i lost to handsome parchment like i'm gonna continue to say it my hat goes off to him he ran an absolutely perfect race when it mattered most um he's the olympic champion and i i got the silver um, disappointment because I wanted to get the gold, yes, but happy that I was, you know, able to fulfill that lifelong dream of being an Olympic medalist. That, you know, that sets another part. But I just come into this year, you know, I worked my tail off, worked hard. Um, the two goals that I had, even when we were at um, uh, New Balance mm -hmm. at, at, um, in Boston, I said I wanted to win the world indoor title and I want to come back and defend my, my outdoor title. And that's exactly what I did. So, you know, to mark those two things off my, my, my bucket list and my, my things to do this season is great. How did the race go for you? Right, once, you we, get the, once we get the gun to go <laughs> off. Yeah, yeah one, one thing, I mean, I think Trey said it in the post-race interview. You ran a clean race. He was yeah. like, no one in the world is better at the first five hurdles than you. And so, of course, like, that part always goes very yeah. well. Overall, just for, you can be as technical as you want. How did the race feel for you? Yeah, the race felt great. I mean, I, I I think my first start with Devin in the race was probably one of my best starts I've had all season. I definitely uh, definitely hit 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 some hit some A button B button type <laughs> things to uh, to get that start going. But even going through like my that that race to win to win the gold, it was it was great. Of course, I got antsy at the end. I mean, it's a it's a world title on the line, so you see you feel yourself in front and you. At that point, you know it's only one person to your right that you really got to worry about. So I mean, I get, I get, I get over hurdle ten. I'm running in. I glance, glance to my right like I did in Tokyo, and I mean, I, I crossed the finish line first. So overall, the race was great. Um, I, I mean, if you want to get real technical with it, of course, there was a couple points where I could have done it right and a couple points where I could have done it better. But at the end of the day, it's just to get to the finish line before anybody else. I saw you a couple times. They showed the head-on one. And by the way, two of the really great, one of the all-time great videos on the on the interwebs that's not, you know, a cat video, <laughs> is is your 1298 at the NCAAs yep. where you just, you know, it's just that shot of you mm -hmm. coming and right the, the upper body is completely, you know, you're like, how's a guy running that fast, jumping over stuff? And the top is just doesn't move. And it's this, and so now they have, NBC has this same shot and you're watching that. But all of a sudden, those last, that last 10th hurdle and your eyes are still shivering. You're looking, you can tell. Yeah. I don't know if you saw it. You're like, uh, I definitely, yeah. I definitely knew. I definitely knew. But it, you're peeking. Yeah, I was definitely. But it was one of the things where I knew Trey was on my right, and I didn't feel anything on my left. So it was like, sh like, get to the mm -hmm. finish line, but don't do that overall. Don't do that. Don't do right. that in, in, in every race. You know, 
focus on the 10 hurdles and get to the finish line. But I think we can make a small, small exception for world championships. And then what's the immediate aftermath? Because you, you say you cross the line, you look over there and realize there's nobody there. Yeah. And in that instance, what's in your in instant? What's in your head? Um, back to back. First, first, first one for me on on the world stage. Um, I have a chance to defend, you know, the the indoor title and the outdoor title come next season. So that's just something, you know, remarkable. You know, I, and going into the next season, I'm able to work hard. I'm able to, you know, train like I'm like I'm still the uh, the, the number two, but no, I'm number one. And that's the thing. Like I just continue just to work hard at, at all my goals and figure out what exactly I want to do. And it's you set your goals so high so that when you you achieve them, you know, okay, I did everything in my in my ability to achieve that goal versus anything else. Mm -hmm. So 16 hours later, you're sitting here with us. <laughs> From the moment you crossed the finish line, could you give it like for those who haven't been in that position, uh, what did the last 16 hours kind of look like? For it's you? been it's been a, it's been crazy. It's been a whirlwind. Um, so across the finish line, do a half a victory lap. We you yell for Trey. Come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> Trey, I mean, it's that your was, first. It was a really your, funny moment. Yeah, it's your first one, so you don't really you don't. When your first one, you just like you just you, you don't know what, what what to do. So like my thing is. Trey's fresh on the scene. He just got a, a great silver medal. So it's like, part of me is like, let me show Trey what exactly to do to get the full 110% of it. So I'm telling Trey to come on. We do half victory lap. We get stopped because uh, Shelly Ann, Sharika, and um, Elaine Thompson are about to run the 100. They finish. And we get stuck at the top of the top of the key of the 150, doing a whole bunch, waiting, waiting, taking pictures, signing, waiting. Then after that, you go do, we got, uh, it's like, you need to hurry up. We got, we got war ceremony. So I'm running back, <laughs> pinning all my clothes, do the war ceremony. Oh, yeah. Forget to mention that Joe Kovacs doesn't <laughs> this have. Is, this is the best. Can yeah. we bring up this yeah, video yeah. back? If, if exactly. Have. If you can't play the video back, please play it back. <laughs> we get back. We get back. Joe Kovacs doesn't have his damn jack, podium jacket. So he asked me. And of all people, I mean, I do wear my, I do like my clothes baggy, but he asked me out of all people, he's like, Grant, can I use your jacket? I'm like, I mean, sure. Like, at that point, I just take off my jacket. He puts it on. Funny video right now. I think, I'm pretty sure it's going viral because Joe's that at least. That guy in a little cold. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he's at least a, at least a 3X, maybe pushing a 4. And I'm only, I, I got an extra large because it's the only thing that fits my long torso. So he had a little bit of breathing room, but still. We finished that. He gives me back my jacket. You go through all the press. You go up. You go across. You come back down. Go across. Go under. It's a labyrinth. Yeah. You go all the way through this little this this maze. And then from there you go to do um, the press conference. And the press conference was actually, it was it was it was pretty special in my eyes only because it's you know you got you have myself, you had the the drama with Hansel, then you had the drama with Devin, and then I mean of course. You have Trey, but everybody wants, you know, I, I don't want to leave Trey out, and I say this very lightly, but everybody was wondering what I was going to do, what what was happening with you, what were you thinking mm -hmm. about? And uh, it's just one of the things now where it's like you watch that happen, and then two two minutes later you watch what happens with Devin. So it, it's like you said, it's just one of, one of the things where it's just very special. And, I mean, I'm to this day, I even told in an interview, I said something has to be wrong with the technology. But at the end of the day, they made a judgment call that they, they, he's out the race and you, there's nothing you can really do about it. Then drug testing? Yep, drug testing. But I'm a, I, now I'm a veteran in this part. <laughs> I already had to pee, so my drug testing was less than 10 minutes. Wow. Yeah, so the race, you had yeah to exactly. Pee? Oh, yeah, always, always. Before, the, before every major final, I always have to use the bathroom. Like, makes drug testing that much better. You go in, you do, you do your dirty, you come back. And you're done. Let, I was out. I was out in 11 minutes. That's confidence nice. that you know. I feel like most athletes be a little bit nervous. Oh, they want to. No. They want to get all of the liquid out of them, no. be as light as possible, to float over those hurdles. No. You're like, <laughs> I got things to do after this. Race. Yeah, I, I, that that's that's what I pride myself on. Um, drug test. Come back to Adidas Hospitality. Meet my family. Uh, we have a, a small little small little glass of wine from there. Um, one of my old high school coaches. They were at the little local hub right across the street. Walked over there, said hello to them, gave them my, my, my love and my blessings. And then from there, I went to um, this place called the Martini Bar. Nobody was there. I had me two two things of bourbon. 
I sat there <laughs> alone. No. Oh no, I was with, I was with my family, but I had two things of Eagle Rare bourbon, perfect, relaxed, chilled, and didn't go to bed probably till about 1.30 because you're still on cloud 15. You're running all these thoughts through your head, and you know you wake up in the morning, you got over 300 text messages. Most of them you just read because it's just people that saw you on TV, so you don't reply back to them. If anybody <laughs> actually hears this, I'm very sorry. You weren't supposed to hear that. But then afterwards, you go through all the social media stuff. You try to get caught up. You try to repost the stuff that you need to repost. You try to do everything else. But overall, man, and then now I'm doing the interviews and getting my getting my side of the story out with, with Devin. And I get to be here with my my OG and, and, a, and a couple other family members, but man, it's it's been a it's been a crazy whirlwind of 16 hours. Do you ever replace? Did you have you once replayed the race in your head, or is it over? I want I, there's no no need to today. It's over. I I, I got my medal. Mm -hmm. I, I did everything I had to do uh, with Adidas. Uh, like everybody's happy on their side, and that's it. I mean, granted, like I said, I I would love to have Devin and Hansel in that race because I am a true competitor, and I think they both know that. Win, lose, or draw. I'm gonna go out there and give it a, give it 110. percent But it, you know it, that's how the cars were late, and I had I had two aces today. What Coach Holloway said he he's proud of me. Um, we actually have a couple nice, very nice pictures, and you know the main thing with Coach Holloway and us, we love reading, we love just having random people send us stuff saying you can't do this or you guys aren't good enough to do this, you won't figure this out, you can't do this, and our confident answer is well. We're number one indoors. <laughs> right. We're number two all time outdoors. We have two world championships and we have one indoors and we won the indoor tour. So it's like, you keep saying we can't do this, but we have the <laughs> resume that clearly proves that we can. And day in and day out, each and every year, we always figure out, you know, we get better in our technique, we get better in our coaching. And he, I mean, obviously, you, you know, Coach Howell and I have a really great relationship, but it's just one of the things now where it's like, we fine tune, we figure out what we need to do, and we take that momentum, we move it into 2023, we go defend the indoor title and the outdoor title, and, and look, whatever happens after that, it happens. Is this enough of a good enough reason to bust out the pappy? Oh, so the, the pappy was actually a, a, a <laughs> gift from my friend Victor. I'm actually getting ready, well, when I leave tomorrow, I'll probably see him on Thursday or Friday. So he said I, we can have another one, but like, it's only for certain reasons why we, we we bust open. But this medal right here, yes, he'll be he'll be ecstatic. His two sons and his baby his baby girl, they'll be ecstatic to see that medal. I love that. Are you lobbying back at USATF HQ for that four by four? <sighs> no comment. <laughs> um I told them I told them, granted, I, I I told I told Team USA, I said, once I do what I have to do today, as in yesterday, um just know I'll, I'll I'll be ready, and I left it at that. And they haven't said anything. If they don't say nothing to Coach Holloway, I'm out tomorrow morning at 6 a.m. I hope they find other relay legs. <laughs> well, you saw how they did in the in the open hunter. Like they got four pretty quick dudes. Yeah, like, I can't I can't <laughs> wait. I'm not going to disclose no information, but I can't wait for you guys to see the relay order. Really? <laughs> oh, yeah. really? So as good as last night was, yeah, you uh, and you're so focused on your race, you missed some good stuff, yeah, uh, right? I, like you talk about Kovacs, did you get to see the, the shop put guys see, went nuts? Yes, they all went nuts. Oh, wait, I got to put the mic up. <laughs> He's a media pro, I love it. Yeah. They all went nuts when me and Trey were at the, at the 300 mark. So we're oh. taking pictures, we're doing everything. I'm just hearing everybody screaming, crowd going crazy. At that point, I'm still like, I'm still on cloud nine trying to figure out where I'm going, where's my flag, what I'm <laughs> doing. But I heard, but I haven't seen. So I can't wait till I get to the airport and I'm able to sit down and watch everybody's performances because I heard they had another great performance out there on the ring. They were good. The, the pole vault. Pole vault the was good. The hammer throwers. Just like, we, we crushed it yesterday. Real we advantage. absolutely crushed it. Is it really like you felt like Hayward in terms of just like the atmosphere? Different? Did it feel different this time? N yes. And no. So I, I still feel Olympic trials when we first, when we all first came to Hayward for the very first time was actually really, really cool. I think that was more electric than what we had. Of course, we having world champs on U.S. soil is another, you know, great thing. But still at the same time, I ran 1281. So I'm always going to feel like that crowd <laughs> was electric no matter what happened. So definitely excited. But um, last night was, was, was special only because I would walk. After I finished my hurdle hurdle run through, 
Um, somebody will say, let's go Holloway, and then somebody else will follow, then somebody else will follow. Next thing you know, you got the whole crowd and that little section just going crazy. And, you know, I build off of that. You know, I used to play American football, and, you know, having that student section, when you get that, that clutch player or anything, that, that, builds, that builds that momentum that you, that you want. How do you follow this up now? Like, what's next when you're looking the rest of the season? Uh, this is a, a high. Yeah, uh, this is the high. I mean, I honestly, I, I, I say it with a grain of salt, but whatever happens at the end of the season now, it, you know, it happens. There's nothing you can really do. I have – this is my main goal, you know, to win world championships. That was the goal. And at the end of the day, if, you know, I, if I go overseas, if I decide to go overseas – and I don't win, or if I win, um, it's, it's this nothing's going to top this feeling right here. And obviously, it's a Diamond League final, and um, I'm going to sit down and talk with my, my team and Coach Holloway and all my doctors and everybody back at home and figure out if that's a good move. Um, this year, I've been dealing with a little bit of knee knee pain. Just I think John can attest it's just old age. But, <laughs> yeah, easy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. John has two of those. Yeah. Wait, wait till you add 32 years on. So yeah. <laughs> but uh, just been dealing with a little bit of knee pain, man. But um, it held up really, really well this weekend, and just just excited to see what happens next, man. You've been flowing that emoji, the July 17th emoji, yeah. for a year. Now, uh, do you have to petition Apple to change like their emoji <laughs> for next year's World Championship? See, that's when I knew this year was going to be special, when I actually <laughs> ran across that emoji. Um, it, it's funny because I actually remember using it like when I was a, when emojis first came out, like very, very first came out, and I... Kind of thought to myself, I couldn't remember if it was June seventh or June seventeenth or July seventh or July seventeenth, and it was the day that I ran my final. So I was like, I'm gonna stick it in one Reddit, and especially after I. So a little bit of background on my season. I didn't run for seven weeks. It was seven weeks straight. I didn't run. When was this? What part? Um, from probably about the end of April till New York in, in June. I didn't wow. run any meets. I. Scheduled to run in Bermuda, got rained out, was set, uh, it was, got winded out, excuse me. Let me use the terms, <laughs> let me choose the terms correctly. Yeah. Went to. Um, no, you shouldn't say it didn't get winded out because some people ran the race. Yeah, not okay. me. I'm just saying. <laughs> right. Not me. So um, it was not, but it, it, the race no, yeah. did happen. So Shane Braithwaite won the race and yeah. I gave him his props. I was like, yeah. congratulations. Like, yeah. hey, that, you won. We ran in a hurricane, but you <laughs> yeah, ran. Yeah, yeah, you won. I was <laughs> not had, running yeah. in that. We, had we were joke. joking yesterday because, like, this, that side of the stadium was all in the shade, yeah. and the other side was in the sun. And we're like, it's kind of cold, like sitting in the shade. We were like shivering a little bit, and we're like, flip the track <laughs> <laughs> for the athletes. Think of the uh, athletes. The sunny side. We're flipping the yeah, track. Flip the track. Make it hot. Um, That's like watching Aaliyah Hobbs run in the final. Oh, when the, she did the it, hailstorm. They ran in yeah. just a just. It was raining just buckets. And they're running on the other side, and they're running the other direction. Yeah, it so was they crazy. start on the end. It looked like they were starting the fifteen hundred in a downpour. And I, I thought of that when she raced. Yeah, she was, was like, "Oh, at least crazy. she's running the right way yeah. today." <laughs> That's nice to know. Yeah. So then I opened up with Devin in um, New York. That's when I ran thirteen oh six. And yeah, I don't want to say people counted me out, but most people were kind of just like, "Is he ready? Is he in shape? Is he good?" And at the end of the day, I knew I had trials. As long as I go to trials and I do another season's best, I'm good at trials. And then I was like, as long as I go to world champs in my semifinal round, just prove, not just to myself, but prove to the world that I'm here, I knew I was straight. So when I ran 13 when I came across the line running 13 one and I knew I slowed down, I was like, okay, I'm easily in 12-9 low shape. They get the 12... 12, 12, 9, mid, 12, 9, low. I knew I knew it was there, so just have to put the race together. Is a world champion a world-class athlete? <laughs> <laughs> According to some people, no. But hopefully with me having two now, I can, I can That's say. That's the barrier yeah, right there. Yeah, now hopefully, hopefully, you're a world-class yeah. athlete. I, I hope so. Now you can do kind of like Jeremy Roenick. Remember when uh, when Patrick Wall got out of him? You go, I can't hear you. I have a gold medal. I'm using them for ear. Most of like, um, brocking out all the naysayers when well, it happens. So, Grant, like, we've been talking to enough people here, I guess, like, this this week about just, like, this is a, an important moment for the sport here in America, right? Like, it's a world championships, but it's, like, being propped up is, like, this is, this is make or break. Like, well, this is a big moment for our stars. You're one of the stars, and, like, it's sort of, you're here among the track community, and, like, this is being celebrated big time here. Now, how do we kind of get that excitement to go, you know, outside of Eugene and and get the, get get it to translate? What reality other show? Are yeah, you going I mean, on? real. I mean, not reality <laughs> no. show, but it's just. I think the sport is. We want it to change like this. Yeah. But it's like a helicopter propeller. 
Helicopter propeller takes time. It goes slow, 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 and then it speeds up, speeds up, speeds up. So it's just one of the things where we're we're still in that slow phase. We're bringing people on with like RG3 that used to do it, but is a big time spokesperson for the um, ESPN and, and and football. Helping him come. You got Shannon Sharp throwing tweets out. You got Magic Johnson throwing tweets out. It's just small, small baby steps like that that's going to help the sport grow. Now, obviously. NBC is doing a great job of trying to get it broadcasted in, in a certain hour. But I think my challenge to, you know, the other the other mainstreams, ESPN, ESPN2, ESPN3, uh, ESPNU, ESPNW, ESPN55. That's ESPN, a lot of ESPNs. Yeah, my yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> But it's just, it's up to, it's up to, you know, those other broadcasting, you know, streams just to help out and just help the sport grow. I think the athletes itself are, are, are trying their hardest. Um, but it, it's, it's just you guys are doing your job. Yeah, like, we're, all, we're all right. trying to do our job to the best of our ability. But it just takes it takes small, small baby steps to get to to those big, those big, those big steps that we want. But it does take stars first and foremost. Mm-hmm. You have to have somebody. To I agree. Right? Nobody fully. wants to see the guy who won the hundred, uh, one ten hurdles in thirteen four. Yes, right? fully like agree. I get it sometimes if you're running it. But it, you, so you have to have the stars, which is what we have. Also, just to answer your question, we got to have loosened up embargo. Um, video embargo so that we can actually show you show on the ESPN video because right because nbc says well you can't show that till because we we're off the, the air to it. on the west coast yeah. so now it's two in the morning and i can finally show it yeah uh, so i'm just saying i know you, sometimes look, my anything, hands are tied I, yeah, exactly. sometimes my hands are tied because i'd put I'm you all on i would put in <laughs> right i would i'll put you on all listen rather than seeing one more third division finish soccer goal i'd yeah. rather see you guys too hey i do want to give props to john somehow i so, got on the ticker for the second time in my life i was on did you i was on the ticker last nice. night so i appreciate whatever you sent no, in i didn't know they did that you I, did on your so, own i appreciate i can't I, take any credit i appreciate what was that, the other man? time you were on the ticker uh world record world record first well no actually four times i lied to okay. you guys yeah, yeah. <laughs> you got, you're on the ticker yeah, a lot I, that four times I, you're just like the padre you know score just james, every day you come lebron by. james could get food to the homeless and he's on the ticker <laughs> <laughs> lebron could just eat a meal and yeah, he'd be on the ticker exactly. what he had lebron james dropped 40 at the drew league what is the drew league basketball he dropped 40 points well he dropped 40 points for the whole season oh, why is it surprising to everybody <laughs> hey shouts out to lebron if you ever see this <laughs> Have you met him? Who, who are who are guys outside of your sport that that you oh, like to watch? Man. That that you go, oh, that's on TV. I'll, I mean, I was a I'll huge spend five minutes. Yeah, on that. before Kobe Bryant passed away, I was a huge Kobe Bryant fan. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously LeBron. Obviously, any of those name brand NBA p- players that you that you know. Right. Um, I've been really big on esports, man. Just really, just trying to really? build on that. So I've been. I talked to uh, there's a there's a gaming group called Phase. Mm-hmm. Um, Atlanta phase so I wa- I've been watching Call of Duty streams with them um, phase avalanche like we used to run against each other and 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 VA I've been talking to him hopefully hopefully I can join a, a team Atlanta phase and the e-gaming e-gaming hopefully it's, hopefully me building my little resume can, <laughs> can help out with a couple of little bit of marketing stuff but just I, I I don't really know exactly like names I just have those hobbies yeah. I've been watching a little bit of golf, so you know Cameron Smith, Roy, um, obviously Tiger Woods is is big up there right now. He's not playing great, but still Tiger Woods. Big is, name, right? Yeah, Tiger Woods is Tiger Woods, but you know, just small stuff like that. Whenever something's on the TV, I gravitate towards it. Who are the guys that you looked up to when you were oh. younger and up and coming? Like, who who, who did you have a poster of? Man, that whole so my first year in the sport, I was running against everybody that I watched on YouTube. So you had Devin Allen. You had um, Hansel Parchment, Aries Merritt, David Oliver, um, Sergey Shabankov. Like, those, all those people that I ran against in world championships in 2019, those are all the people I looked up. I mean, obviously, me coming up, I, I'm 24 now, so at the time I was 21 when I, was, when I first did my first world championships. Mm-hmm. Olympics was 2016, so what's that, three years? Did I do that math right? Something like that. So I was 18 years old when I started watching all those. So to see and to get next to them and fill them in the blocks of me is is just a remarkable thing. How about older guys like like Alan Johnson? I was gonna say I thought that Darren he was getting Robles, um, Dominic Jackson, Arnold, these guys. Colin Jack- actually, Colin Jackson reached out to me and congratulated me on you know the medal. He's just <laughs> one of the he's one of the guys that I used to reach out to because in my eyes, Colin Jackson was the only one that brought that much speed like me. 
you the first hurdle. And for me, it's like, all right, that's the coaching cue. Like, how can, how did you manage your speed and how can I take the information that you gave me and implement it into my race? So Colin Jackson, Alan, jo Alan Johnson, Darren Robles, David Oliver, Terrence Chamel. I mean, the list of all the great high hurdlers goes on and on and on. It's unbelievable. I saw David Oliver. Uh, he was in the concourse today. Yeah. And I've said this about him. I don't know if I said it. Yeah, he said it to me. Uh, and I said, I look at David Oliver, and if you were on the playground don't, and you had don't. the first pick, I don't care what <laughs> sport it is, right? What are we playing? I don't know, but I'm going to take him. We're playing kickball. Right, that's the guy I want. We're playing basketball. I'll still take him. Football? Yes. Right? Like, that guy just looks like. Yeah, he was a, he was a freak of nature. Uh, <laughs> well, that was the interesting thing about, like, you know, Aries Merritt and, and him. It was like the, very quickly the, the one yeah the 110 hurdle scene just kind of changes pretty quickly and you've you're you're crushing it right now how long is this core that you know you trey devin uh, you know if football if, yeah. he, if he doesn't get pulled from football daniel like how long is this core gonna gonna hold it uh, hold it down it's just it's uh, starwin's theory survival of the fittest mm. i mean i i plan my goals to keep going until i can't make a, a championship or until i'm struggling and it's like why, the, why is Grant still out there? <laughs> like, just give it up. You did everything you did for the sport. Like, just right. go, go out on top. Go play for the Atlanta yeah, yeah. phase. Yeah, go, yeah go, exactly. <laughs> go play for Atlanta phase. Do something. So my goal is to keep going as long as I possibly can. I mean, God willing, knock on wood, I want to go till 36. There um, you go. Alan Johnson did 36, and he said he felt great. Um, at 34, he said he was he was still dialed in. He was running 13-1, 13-2. Uh, at like every every race, every track meet, and and then he said a couple. He went through a couple injuries, so he knew he was like, all right, I need to, I need to calm down. So you and Mouse will have time to figure this out. Yeah, <laughs> you got time. So <laughs> it's funny you say that because I told Coach Holloway we was just joking around, and I said like, my last dance might be 2028 with you, because I wanna I wanna leave, find some land, start a family, do whatever I want to <laughs> do. You gotta get but land. But then Coach Holloway, Coach Holloway is like, nah, we're just. <laughs> How about how about I get you some land and you just stay in Gainesville as long as possible? So I, I think me and Coach Holly's last dance is going to be 28, but Coach Holly probably sees it to 2036. He likes dancing. <laughs> 2040, who knows? Uh, I will say this because we've talked about some of the other competitors. I was watching and it probably didn't come on TV um, in the heats, but when Daniel Roberts went down and crossed the finish line, you were the first guy that got to him. Yep. I don't know if you were in the mix zone or you were in the area, but I saw you went out right away, man, and I don't know what was exchanged other than it, was, it wasn't just a hug. You were in his ear yeah. for a little bit there, but you were the first guy out there. That's, that's Daniel, obviously, you know, you've mm -hmm. watched, you've seen me and Daniel's fierce, fierce battles. So Daniel and I have built this relationship of outside of track, that's, 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 that's my big brother. That is my big brother. When, when I'm on the track in my lane, whether if I'm in lane two, he's in lane one, or if I'm in lane five, he's in lane eight, or four and six, vice versa. He knows for that 12-second span, I want to kick his ass. <laughs> and as soon as it's done, mm -hmm. I'll be the first person to put my arm around his shoulder. I'll be the first person to give him knucks. I'll be the first person to, to be there for him. So when I saw that, and I'm getting goosebumps talking about it, actually, it's just one of the things where I know how hard Daniel's working. I've sat there on the plane. I sat there on the train with him. I sat there in the in the cafeteria eating food, and I see him working hard physically, emotionally, spiritually. He's working hard, and for that to happen, it's just, you know, it's mm -hmm. just a, a knife in the heart. So, honestly, I told him. I got down to him. Obviously, I, I held on to him. I said, just don't let him see you down. You know, if you need, if you need a couple seconds, I'm here. Get it out now. But when you get up on the on the press and everything, don't let him see you down. He was great. He he like really held it together. Good. And was, I yeah, mean, he, I, it was admirable. It's it's hard, you know. You you don't for Daniel's case, he didn't have the best indoor season that, like he wanted to. He switches coaches and he puts it together right at USA's. He runs thirteen oh three for a USA title, which is great, you know. And that's what he's 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 right there at his PR. So it's like I know he's in great shape. I know he can do it. But then for that to happen again. Mm. Because it happened in 19, he uh, he clips he clips. Right for all the good fortune you've had in the World yeah. Championships, this guy is just <laughs> snake bit. Yeah, so he clipped the dude's hurdle in 19, 2020, 2021. He didn't make it out the semifinal round, and then 
this happened. So, you know, my, my, my hat goes off to Daniel. He's working hard, but I just told him, keep his head up. Don't let him see you down. And we talked a little bit at the um, in the hotel once it was all said and done, and he was in good spirits. So you were just talking about the last dance earlier. It's funny, we, we're sitting here with Vernon Norwood, who told <laughs> us he wants to try an 800. And he, he, he boldly Uncle said Vern. he thinks he can go 145, 146. So looking at your personal best. Don't, I'm not down, doing no 800. You don't even have to, so you don't don't have have to, 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 to worry that, about me. No. <laughs> So if we look at your just personal best across, like we're not that far away from a good decathlon, but just in general, is there any event that you want to try before the end of your career that you're like, you know what, I could probably do a pretty. I feel good. Like you I've get people it. in the comments saying events. like, Grant, do the hundred. No, with the, I'm not doing the hundred because there's nothing I suck left. At that. You've done every event that you want to do. I've done there's everything nothing. I want to do. So the sixty indoors is far you want to go when you in, in, six, into that I, flat sixty yeah, is okay. Yeah, I did sixty. I did hundred. I did two hundred. I did three hundred. I did four hundred. I'm not doing four hundred hurdles. I'm not. I'm not. Be good. We could stretch you out. I asked you that one time too, and you about throttled me. The oh. math <laughs> adds up that you would be good. At oh, the and everything hurdles. adds up yeah. till you get on the track and have to do it. <laughs> <laughs> everything looks good on paper till you have to actually go execute it. Yeah. Um. But all honestly, I felt like I've done everything I, I can do in the sport. I mean, if anything, if I can add one one more thing to my bucket list is to get on a a four by one, uh, with with some of the top guys. Um. But. That is not up to me. Florida Relays next year. Yeah, I already told Fred. I already, I already okay. told everybody that. Let's let's do it. When speaking of hundred guys, when you come out here, because the Gators and your program, like they're everywhere. Mm -hmm. I watched a semi, we and I was our own nation. I was trying to I was trying to tell Rob Walker the broadcast uh, that uh, um, Raymond is yep. in the same semi with and Hakeem Sonny yep. Brown, who was uh, half of the only guys that ever ran under thirty eight in a in a four by one. So why am I missing? It's you. It's those two. You and who was the fourth? Ryan thing? Clark. Ryan Clark. Our fourth leg. But you know, you look around, or you go out, and here's you know Anna Hall's out there today, and Champion Allison's going to run, mm -hmm. even though he's only been a Gator for a year. Alabama want to claim, but like, how much <laughs> of that meat do you watch, and you see you see Gainesville out there? It's like I said before, we could, if University of Florida was a nation, <laughs> we'll be in the top ten. I guarantee it. We'll be in the top ten for medal count. I mean, it's just Coach Holloway has a has a blueprint. He has his coaching staff around him. He has his support system around him, and we all we all listen. I mean, it's not he's just he's a hell of a coach if you just uh, listen trust to him. Me, I, I said it. I, I said know it on live television, right? Uh, he, he's a hell they of make a shirts coach. out of it now, uh, right? You he's, made it famous. He's, he's a great coach, and he has his support system with Coach Adrian Mann, Melanie Welty, Eric Worski, Nick Peterson, uh, Chris Zelinski. He has all of his, his his little counterparts. It's like a tree. You know, you see the tree, that's Coach Holloway, but you don't see the roots that keep him grounded. And that's everybody mm -hmm. keeps him grounded. And he keeps his blueprint, and it works every time. Talk about want to be in the 100 at shedding events. Do you remember when you got done at the NCAAs in the long jump, and you were like, I'm so glad that I'm done with this curse word <laughs> event? Shouts out to Coach Peterson. So a, a couple of three years later, do we have any desire to go down that runway anymore? No. Are you still glad if, it, it, yeah. the fire has not come back? I didn't. I didn't really get out there on the on the runway like I wanted to my my last year. Um, that was just because I was so twelve nine was calling my name. <laughs> so a lot sure. of my practices were geared to hurdling, and me and Coach Peterson didn't link up like like we wanted to like my sophomore mm -hmm. year at Tennessee. So if I firmly believe if I had a little bit more practice with, with Coach Peterson, I think I definitely could have replicated what I did in uh, 20, 2018 at, at Tennessee, yeah. at, SEC, at SECs. But it was just one of the things where I was so locked in on 12-9, 12-9, 12-9, Ronaldo <laughs> Nehemiah, just channeling all that, the, all that energy. Uh, SEC finishes in the long jump. For Grant Holloway, this is just off the top of my head, but you can go ahead and check it because I'm right. I know three, you are. Three outdoors, three indoors. Yes. He's got a first, a second, a third, a fourth, a fifth, and a sixth. Yes. <laughs> sounds like, about right. Who, ha who hands, like, that's an incredible thing. That sounds about right. It is, like, like, who hits for the cycle like that, right? Like, and I don't know when the last one was. Like, if you needed to thread the needle, I, got, I just got to get a oh fifth, man, God. and this is perfect. SEC is so hard. Thing. It's so hard. I like that and now it's going to get better, right? With yeah, Texas, exactly. you want a piece yeah, of that? Exactly. Give, give it some time. Give it some time. <laughs> it's gonna be, the SEC is going to be damn near the national meet. <laughs> it, it's, it's sort of that now. Look at Talitha Diggs. She was didn't win the conference championship mm -hmm. either time in the 400. And she's now USA national champ. champ in, she's national champ indoor and outdoor, and then she was the U.S. champ. She's another one. She's too lethal, by the way. That's the new yeah. thing. When you go that. <laughs> I like that so. you laughed when we brought up uh, Vernon Norwood because, I mean, he's just hysterical on Twitter. Just the way, the amount of shit he gives Marvin Bracey. There so, it is. 
Do you have for us your top? Marvin? We know. Vernon. Vernon. It's a hard, it's a hard first place. My top, my top three is Vern, Fred Curley, and Marvin Bracey. Those are my top three. Like the guys to follow on Twitter. Yes. To, who are just hysterical. Yes. I mean, I mean Fred is, I, 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 he, he can say, wakes up in the morning, and I swear it's a, a scheduled tweet at this point. Just greatness. Greatness. <laughs> like, that's a, this alarm <laughs> clock must just be him saying greatness to himself. Yeah. He's all about buying land, too. I think that's <laughs> yeah. the other thing, too. So I actually had a great conversation. Fred put me on a lot of games. So um, hopefully I can I can be putting out some tweets like that, like Fred soon. Really? He put me on a lot of games. He's very, Fred is very, very smart. Very, mm -hmm. very smart. And he knows he knows what it what it takes. He knows what it takes. He's a gentleman farmer. Yeah, there it is. He was showing me pictures. He's, he's planted a grapevine. He doesn't want to make wine. He just wants to eat grapes. So he's in <laughs> wherever he is in his garden. I'm going to keep grapes nearby. <laughs> is that uh, I'm going to keep grapes nearby all the time, baby. <laughs> Can we pick your brain about like some of the other races? Like, What, what, what are you expecting in this 200-meter final? Uh, I mean, obviously. I, I it, asked you in the big zone yeah. before the 100. I was like, Grant, you have any predictions? And you're like, no. absolutely. Stop trying not, to get me I'm in not, trouble. I'm not doing no predictions because that's how people get caught up. Um, but obviously... You look at the hundred; it lived up to the hype. Two hundred is going to be just as just as much fun. We have another chance to sweep between um, Ariane Nye and Noah Lyles and Kenny Ben Derrick. We have that chance to you know make history in that event. Um, it's just one of the things now. It's only time will tell. Only time will tell. Is that Papa Joe? Not yet. No, I oh, think that's we've got Josh. Josh. Big Josh. We've got. Wow. The, the, the first time I saw him here in Eugene, he was coming out of a Voodoo Donuts. Yeah, that's with the with the double make the double Look maple bacon bar or whatever Look it was. It was. Do you think your jacket would fit around him? Huh? Would your jacket fit around I mean, him? We never queued up that video. <laughs> yeah, if it fit Joe, I think it could damn sure fit him. Yeah, that's crazy. You want to take a break? Go eat. Um, cause then I think they want then, you, they want we, your, we yeah, want, you, they want to know what hundred point wines uh, you're buying with your kind of with that Adidas point. money. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> Part <laughs> one. Cut. <laughs> yeah. All right. We're going to sub out Grant for a bit. We'll let Grant we'll have jump his, him. his lunch. You can keep the metal here. I think All it'll right, be safe. Keep the metal. Yeah. Take your phone. And, yeah, <laughs> we, we got a breed over we, there for you. Show the, metal into the, into the show the metal into the camera. All right. It's light. What's the other one like? I like the other, the world, the, 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 oh, the Doha one's cool. The one from Serbia is really nice. Oh, the indoor one. Yeah. yeah. What's on the? Yeah, that's all right. What's on the back side? All right, all right. It's, it's all right. light. It's light. What's your impression of the metal? No <laughs> first place. That's all it does. Is represent first first place. Where's Josh? All right, we'll bring on Josh now. We'll swap that's out me? Grant. Yeah. Intro. Here we go. Josh we go. Otunde, the world championship bronze medalist, threw three PRs yesterday. Three PRs from South Carolina. First South Carolina, Carolina Athletic Outdoor Club Global Championship coming away with a bronze medal. Here he is. We had one of the interns assemble the chair, and now we're really going to put it to the test. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, one of the interns? I put together three of these chairs. Exactly. What am I? Yeah. <laughs> is that where I'm? Is that how I rate in this joint? Yeah. We got Anderson. He's the intern. Yeah, it is. Wow, that is big though. We are testing is, that. So, hey, congratulations, man. Appreciate it. It's Thank been a man. long time making a trying to make a team. Yep. And then to go out, and uh, I texted his coach, his Mike Sargent, at South Carolina University, and I said, yep. that's a hell of a throw and a hell of a series back, against man. a hell of a field. Yeah, we go way back. When you go and, and, and look at that, to have your best day yeah. on a meet like this when it is required, man. you know, what, what's the satisfaction I mean, level when lot. I get back and I finally put my head in that pill and just go, damn, what a day. No, a lot went into this, man. I mean, I've been coming out here to Eugene for, for years now, like since 2014. Tried to make a junior team, end up being an alternate in the shot put and the discus. And that was a bad day. And like from that day on, I just kind of worked towards it to try and make teams. And I mean, this this weekend was the best weekend I've had out here in Eugene. So I mean, shoot, no complaints. Mac uh, did an interview with you over the phone that we published like online. It was the, the Q&A on the victory lap and, yeah. and sort of you shared some of your story. But I guess there's, you know, 1300 people watching live right now mm -hmm. just to kind of process cool. a little bit of like what, how it, how it, how long it took to get to this point? Like you've had your ups and downs even this season, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, this season's been been tough. Well, 
indoors went great. You know, I took fifth in the world indoors, and I was, you know, on the upswing right in the outdoor season. I opened up at 2163 at Mount Sachs, and then like two weeks later, I had a grade two pec strain. You know, I went and tried to get a different kind of massage that I'm not used to getting. On Thursday and then Friday, I went out and tried to take some hard throws, you know, just to get ready for the competition. I think I had Drake relays the week after. So I went to like, that was my hardest throwing days before the competition next weekend. And then I ended up straining my pec and that kind of set me up for two months, man. But I look at it as kind of a blessing now because those two months, last year, I didn't get done until September, had indoor worlds to get ready for. So I'm back to training in October, in October last year. It was going, going, going. I needed, I needed a little bit of a break, so. Those two months, I just hit rehab. I bench pressed every day. So. I was gonna ask, what do you do when you're yeah. hurt? You know, like, yeah. are you in the pool? Are you biking? Or it's just all weights? Um, luckily, I was able to lift. I could squat and clean a little bit. You know, I had to cut back on the bench initially, Jesus. but once I got, <laughs> yeah, man, once I got um a good rehab plan by some therapists in South Carolina, um, I was doing that day in and day out, getting back, and I think that. That paid dividends because I feel like I'm benching more than I ever benched before. Wow. <laughs> so What's that number? Here. Come on. Oh, What's five. that number? Uh, Right now, my best is 507, but I'm doing reps at like 405 that I couldn't do reps before. So that's like, right. what, three and a half murbers? What is <laughs> yeah, that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we were going to ask you how far you can throw me. <laughs> um, is, and that's kind of, you know. That endurance, obviously, that's coming from those reps. We yeah. saw yesterday. Yeah. But you Absolutely. said you normally are a last throw, best throw type of yeah. guy. And the, something you were working on is you wanted to come out hot. Sure. You did that immediately, come yeah. out with the personal best, and then you set yeah. it again and again. So nuts, it, was that? <laughs> nuts, nuts, <laughs> yeah. That's not me at all. I mean, my whole career, I mean, going back to SECs where I think we met, mm -hmm. um, my last throw there was 2133. My previous best going into the competition was 2030. So I PR by a meter on my last throw, and that was back in 2018. But um, I've always been working at trying to have a better throw earlier in the competition just to, like, put some pressure on my competitors. And uh, that's something I saw Chase Ely do the night before. I was like, man, how the heck can she go out there and throw yeah, 20, almost 49, a PR 20, 49, yeah, yeah. on her first throw? And I was like, I might as well just go in there with an attitude, just go get it right now. You is know, that a different warm-up, or is it just the mental side of things? Um... I saw great practice throws on Wednesday, and I knew I was ready to throw big. Um, on Friday, on Friday for the prelims, they had us like throwing. I think we got four throws in the ring before the comp started. You weren't that pumped after the prelims. <laughs> yeah, when we like, spoke. I was. You, you were like, I, I got to go watch some video and hurting. figure things out. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, um, I was hurting after that first throw. I got in the ring. I didn't have time to do anything else but a full throw. So I got in the throw. I got in the ring and did a full, almost sprained my. Uh, my forearm, my pec was tight. Luckily, we got three more throws after that. And then Krauser gave me a cue. He said, yeah, try and, uh, for the final, try and go out to the, the outside ring and try to take some throws out there to warm up the wrist a little bit. And that kind of paid dividends for me. That's amazing that, like, yeah. you know, you were ahead of him at points know, in right? the competition. <laughs> and here's a, a guy, and, you yeah, know, man. you guys have trained together in the past, but yeah. there is that sort of give and take, like sure, helping man. each other out with He's cues. He's definitely helped me out, even indoor worlds this year, man. Like, he was giving me the rundown of how everything was going to go before the competition started. He said, yeah, man, you're going to get warmed up outside the comp. You're going to want to take off your tape because you're going to have to do the whole check-in process. And we had to walk, like, two miles to get to the actual <laughs> – to the uh the track like <laughs> under through the tones and stuff like that and he's he's been helping me out a lot man, for sure and we go back to chula vista when i first moved out there in 2018 and we were training and got to know him a little bit got to know some of the guys and ryan's been a big help for sure this definitely meant a lot to you but last night the guys in their interviews that they were doing in the mix zone even on the uh in the press conference all they wanted to do was really talk yeah. about you because for years they've been talking about like we want to yeah sweep the medals at a global championship. They mm -hmm. have the two pieces that have been locks for a while now. And then, yeah. you know, Tom Walsh, you know, he's a great guy, but he's been spoiling <laughs> sure. the party. And then yeah. you step into this. And so, you know, yeah. why is it, I guess, that you felt like the, the, the love from these guys so, so heavily yeah. last night? I mean, we've all been putting in work, and I've been looking up to those guys for a long time. And, uh, I've just been working kind of silently under the radar. Like, people were coming up to me after the competition, like, man, I had no idea who you were until you threw 22. <laughs> I was like, yeah, man, I've been under the radar just working hard for a long time, and they've noticed that because I see them almost every week in a competition. So just for it to line up at the perfect time 
And even the training staff, when I got back to the hotel, they were all going nuts like, <laughs> oh, man, <laughs> we've been talking about a sweep since the, the Reese and Cantwell days. And, man, this is awesome. Congrats, man. So it was, it was cool. So we went to a, a Missouri football game one time. We were ahead of Georgia at half, and we thought, should we take a picture right now just in case? They, <laughs> like, can we snap the picture where the opportunity was yeah. above the crowd? Just so you could have that, even if it was remote. <laughs> what do you think of that? Because you got to stay that within was, your, yeah. you got to stay within what you're doing. Yeah, for sure. You watch Cup, but all of a sudden you watch these two guys, <laughs> and they fire it off. Yeah. And Joe puts the heat on him again, and you're yeah, like, God, he's going to get him again at the World Championships. Yeah. I'll be damned. Yep. And and just as you sat as a I don't know a shot put fan, mm -hmm. and you watched. His throw that went what was it twenty two seventy three or eighty nine to win. Yeah, for well, sure. When you watch that, just as I mean, a, you as can't, a, you can't put a cap on either that. one of those guys, man. Like during the competition, I was expecting one of them to go maybe twenty three fifty, twenty four meters. You know, you can't really put any kind of limit on them. I saw Joe warming up at like twenty three fifty. I was like, yeah, today might be the day for <laughs> <laughs> for another world record. But uh, man, those, those guys, you never know what to expect. They've been doing it for a long time and. It's just crazy to see them still competing at such a high level. Now, when those two guys are going back to back, it was interesting to watch unfold because I think Ryan turns around and doesn't watch some of Joe's throws. Yeah, yeah. And Joe, when he watches Ryan's around. throws, but then just goes and does these, you know, twenty yeah. like ten ten yard uh, like blowout yeah. sprints. And yeah. so, how do you kind of keep your cool as you're yeah. watching all of this? Uh, yesterday was tough because you know I opened up at a at a PR throw. You know, so I didn't know really how to respond to that. <laughs> I was running around, jumping. I thought it was like my last throw. That's what I'm used to. <laughs> but the comp just started. So uh, it was, I try and um, put some clothes on. You know, the tough part was that they had the final going. You know, the, the 110 hurdles and the women's 100. And uh, that was kind of getting to some of the time that we had. You know, they were cutting us short, having us wait long times and, it was just tough to stay warm. I went over there and talked to Coach Sarge. He was like, yeah, man, make sure you're ready to go to respond at any time because, you know, Romani was going for it. Walsh mm -hmm. was going for it. I had to be ready to respond, and I just tried to do the best to warm up. I love watching the competition, too. Like, I was watching Ryan, Joe, Tom, Romani. I mean, I've just been a fan for so long. I just wanted to see what the hell they were going to do, you know. I like the one moment. I, you were in third, and then I think you threw a personal best mm -hmm. when you were already in third. Yeah. And it's funny because, like, you're obviously trying to move up, but then yeah. it's like, oh, shoot, more. I got, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> more distance. <laughs> yeah, I was surprised. I was like, damn, I went 22-29. Like, <laughs> I didn't expect it. I just, I mean, my 22-24 felt like a good throw, but the 29, I was like, man, that felt like an average throw, but I just, just caught fire yesterday, man. It was electric. At the stadium. There was so much crowd play, too. Oh, man. It I was, was going to say, right? It was yeah. nice because they all go crazy for Joe, obviously. He's kind of, mm -hmm. excuse me, uh, Ryan with his local. But yep. that built for a while as the sweep was coming and as every yeah. one of you guys got in, right? Yeah. I mean, you could feel that. It's, yeah. Like, all of a sudden, too, you're like, usually you're on the outside ring, mm -hmm. right? It meets and you're yeah. like, you're center stage, man. You guys were the show. <sighs> Literally. Last night. Yeah, they did a great job putting that on. I heard we got some decent coverage on TV, too. So I'm surprised to hear that. But <laughs> just for us to like be the main event last night. It was, was awesome. Couldn't ask for anything better. It was definitely the best competition I've ever thrown in my life, man. And so usually the gold medalists get something, they play that national anthem. Yeah, yeah. Right? And so there's a chance you could be hearing someone else. But now all of a sudden you stand there yep. and you think, wait, that's my national we're anthem all, too. So you get a piece of that, yeah, right? This time all, it's like, that makes it neat. Mm -hmm, we're all a part of that, man. The sweep, it's never happened before. Those guys are great. It was just great and a great opportunity for me. I took advantage of it. And uh, even before the comp. I was telling everybody, like, man, don't be surprised if I get a medal, man. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like that confidence. I was, yeah, I was telling my, my buddies back home, like, man, how crazy would it be if we actually swept the shot put? Like, it's possible. And it just mentally, Coach Sarge was always on my corner telling me I could do it, you know, believing in me. And uh, I just went in there confident and knew what I had to do. I had asked this to Coach Sarge before, too, because your parents are Nigerian. Yep. And was there ever a temptation to switch allegiance? Because you could have made a ton yeah, of teams, man, know, from Nigeria. I know, I know. And, and, and mm -hmm. you did not. How yeah. come or you know, what it meant to stay yeah. and throw for this team? Yeah, for sure. I mean, in 2016, I went to Nigeria, and I, I went to their trials. And I think I threw maybe like 1980. I was throwing 20, about 2012 at the time, but the standard was only 2050. So I went out there to have like a last chance meet. And it was a, it was a tough meet to compete at, man. Um, it wasn't, you know, it could have been run a lot better. But after that, I just kind of made the switch over. I had more faith in the U.S. and like how, that they could help me get to the place where I want to be. And I think I made the right choice, man. Clearly. <laughs> for you and for the country, for as sure, we saw man. all three of you stand up there. For sure.
Do you would think, you would you have uh, would you could you fit into Grant Holloway's oh, warm up top? <laughs> you watched that unfold pretty close. Yeah, man, it looked like a swimsuit on him. <laughs> a it looked like suit. a wetsuit. He was gonna scuba dive. <laughs> that was hilarious. We all had to tug him, tuck the the top down to help Joe squeeze into it. Man, that was dope. Appreciate that, Grant. That was cool. Where you helped out Joe last night? <laughs> that was so, wild, man. What did you do last night to celebrate? What was it after the medal Believe ceremonies? Or not, man. I got lit at Denny's, man. <laughs> Denny's. Denny's was the spot. Everywhere else, it was, it was Sunday night. You know, everywhere was right. closed. So Denny's had the, op the bar open until like 2.30. <laughs> so we were just at Denny's just, you know, having a good time. Me and a bunch of throwers just went out there and we, we chilled until about 2.30. And then people had flights at like 3.30. So it was... <laughs> We went to McDonald's, you know. <laughs> I almost gave Did my Were you guys getting a Grand Slam? Huh? Or, wait, it's the Grand Slam? Nah, we, didn't, we didn't eat at all, man. We, <laughs> <laughs> we were drinking the whole time. I got a video, <laughs> I got a video on my phone. I was about to And you're just drinking metal. at Denny's? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's I'm not like, even a viral know. video. I didn't even know you could get a yeah. drink at Denny's. What yeah, the heck? Yeah, they got a bar at Denny's. <laughs> wait, there, yeah. There's a video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Last night we went to we went through the McDonald's drive through and like we didn't, we weren't in the car. We were just walking. <laughs> <laughs> so it's you, me. Um, who else was there? Brian, uh, Alex Young, Brooke, everybody, a bunch of us. Can yeah. can you text Mac the video or dr yeah. airdrop it? Yeah, this is me. I put my uh, <laughs> I put my medal around the McDonald's worker. You know, and, uh, <laughs> I tried to bribe her a little bit. Like, come on, you gotta let us get some. <laughs> Chicken, man. Let me get some chicken Doing this, you're like pretending to be a car in the drive-thru window. <laughs> <laughs> we like sweet, sweet talked to man. We sweet talked to Michelle. Michelle was a nice lady, man. Michelle, <laughs> I think there was a San Sandra. <laughs> Shout Jonathan, out, man. Shout out to those guys. That was cool. Have you been back to Voodoo Donuts for the maple, the Not maple yet. bacon bar, or whatever? I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. <laughs> Not yet. I remember last year I came back after Prefontaine. I brought a box of like. Two boxes full of just maple bacon bars from Voodoo Donuts. Man. It, was, <laughs> it was phenomenal. It was great. It was a great night. How long are you going to hang out for now? I'm leaving on Wednesday. I uh, just want to hang out. I wanted to see the discus final. My roommate, Brian Williams, I live with him at the center. and I uh, wanted to see him make the final, but got, you know, didn't have the best day. But still, mm -hmm. I'm going to go out and see uh, Sam compete. Yep, well. Sam's there. Hopefully soon. Yeah. Are you like awesome. Grant? Are you hoping to call for the four by one? Oh man, I wish. <laughs> there's there's, there's people in the metal. comment section here. It's a tune day on the third leg of the four by one. Yo, people you are might for still it. win. I actually ran, have you ever done that? I ran yeah. the third leg in middle school, man. Like, <laughs> I was, I was on the, I was on the bend, you know, trying to pump my arms. Man. I'm trying to tell you, I could run. Maybe, I give him, I give him a twelve five right now. Wow. Yeah. Well. You, I might pull a hamstring, but you know I got I got the country on my back, so I'm gonna get through. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna pass up a time, man. You were, you had said time. before that Joe has he thinks like one of the fastest out of the block starts. Yeah, Joe's yeah. walking over right now. He texted me, but he's 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 talked to me about this before because he, there was a point right after 2012 or 2016 Olympics where both him and Krauser like got uh, an offer for to go to training camp or practice or so, something with the yeah. Colts. Okay, and mm -hmm. so. Uh, but he told me back in the Penn State days, like in, when he his, you know, popping uh, pop speed, yeah. he would go up against anyone yeah. else, like even even some of these sprinters. And so yeah. uh, I was watching some of those blowouts yesterday that he was yeah, doing, man. and I was like, he's he's still, he's still got it. How's your so block start? Sure. Yeah. Uh, it's gotten better. When I was in <laughs> high school, I mean, that was probably the thing I struggled with the most. But I was real good at like my lateral quickness. So like the what is it, the five ten five shuttle? Mm -hmm. I ran like a four flat my senior year of high school, and that was like the best at that camp that I was at. So, I mean, that was, that was pretty top-notch. It is something people lose sight of, right? Is they yeah. just see these massive people and they think mass is the key. And yet, mm -hmm. if you took the speed and the explosiveness in there, yeah. uh, nimble feet mm -hmm. to, to get around there, yeah. right? Like, it's, yeah. it's really super athletic guys. Yeah, they are. I mean, definitely some of the most impressive athletes in the world, I think, man. A guy like Joe squatting 800 pounds, you know, just being able to squat... 800, 700, benching 500 pounds, still being able to run, jump, throw, be active. There's not many people built like us in the world, man. We're definitely. We're
disruptive for sure. 100 meter guys, here, go. Just run a straight yeah, line. Man. You run a straight line. Literally, come on. Man. Right? Hammer <laughs> throwers, you got to pick some up and you're spinning around. Right. You got, right? Like, there's, a, spins, like, there's a lot more stuff going on there <laughs> with tough. all you guys. Yeah, there's man. some precision involved. This, Who can't run on a straight line? All right, you got to. Do a full 360, man. Oh, and by the way, you're holding a, you know, you're holding a rock that weighs 16 pounds. Yeah, like the weight of a bowling ball. It's it's nuts. Imagine just trying to do a turn with a bowling ball. Here. Although I have heard, right, when you do it right, because you get momentum, that it, it, at it some point it feels this. almost right. It it's feels almost weightless this. when yeah, it goes for by. Sure, it does. I mean, that that's kind of how I felt on Wednesday going into the competition, man. I've never felt an easy throw. That was my first time throwing 22 meters in practice on Wednesday. Hmm. That was like the easiest throw up imaginable so like that's just a testament to my coaching my programming it's hard but like when things are clicking you don't you don't even have to think in the ring almost you know it just kind of happens which just feels effortless did you know immediately yesterday at the you know each personal best where yeah. you're like that's gone i knew besides the 22 29 i, I didn't expect that one to go that far <laughs> i just kind of felt the energy of the crowd and just got amped up you know it was great it was like some of the loudest claps i ever heard from a stadium, from a crowd in my life. You know, mm -hmm. shot usually doesn't get that kind of attention. Even you, at the U.S. Championship, mm -hmm. it's kind of hard to get the, the crowd involved sometimes, but they were ready for it yesterday, man. Because you've thrown that thing a thousand times. Yeah. If there weren't marks out there, if there weren't any any measuring, how close mm -hmm. could you come the just no on one? the feel and eyeballing it? You, um, how, could you come I'm, within 10 I'd centimeters say, each time? i like, yeah, 10 to 20. Yeah, I, I don't know. And I, the first time I, you threw 22, was it your birthday or was Coach Sarge's birthday? Coach Sarge's birthday. birthday. Yep, September 5th, man. Was that a, was another one where you went dancing through the infield yeah, where the hell that it was. Throw, where were you? you were. I was in pa Padova, Italy. Yeah. Yeah, I've, I, I've been to meet there. It's a yeah. giant stadium. Yeah. Huh? It's like kind of weird that there's like, yeah, in the middle of nowhere. It's like a thousand people in this soccer yeah. stadium. And it's like 75,000 yeah. people or something. I'm not going to lie. I love that competition. They had us in a decent hotel. They had those really like, funny, good those, breakfast. Yeah, yeah, very good. <laughs> it's like it was like yeah. good breakfast. Right. I mean, the breakfast was what it's yeah. a it's a good introduction to like the European circuit. You go down, and it's just that's, like there's a lot of ham and yeah, <laughs> yeah, man, nice espresso machines, man. You can get whatever you want. The best thing was though, they had like rentable bikes. So like, I would rent a bike just because I don't want to take like uh, the bus. They had like a. A local bus you could hop on. I didn't know the Italian. And I couldn't speak. I didn't know where I was going. So I just got a bike and just went off the top of my head like, where's the stadium? <laughs> it's not even close. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was riding a bike around it's Italy. It's not man. close yeah. at all. <laughs> it was nuts, man. It was, it was awesome, though. It was it was definitely like a two mile bike ride, but that was my warm up. So. <laughs> well, the, yeah, the warm up stadium from the stadium, yeah, it's yeah. a nice. As a distance runner, it was too far. Yeah, for sure. Oh, you don't want to run there. Yeah, like, uh, a lot of people on bikes out there and mopeds and stuff. So <laughs> I felt kind of you know normal. Big man on a little <laughs> Vespa and off you go too. Get yourself a scooter, it'd be great. <laughs> What's next for you after this? I mean, first uh, off, you're probably getting recognized way more the last 16 hours than yeah, you ever have in your life. Yeah, man, I took. The most pictures I've ever taken in my life last night, man. That was Sound pretty nice. at the McDonald's. Yeah, man. <laughs> Went to McDonald's, man. You're going to get a Denny sponsorship out of this. So. <sighs> yeah, Mac, do we have that video? Is that, no, we can't. We'll post that later if yeah. you give us permission. <laughs> yeah. All right, for sure. But, yeah, it was uh, it was awesome. Cool thing, me and Travis Scott. The yeah, oh, competed, we were right man. there for that. Yeah, that was pretty cool. I mean, I was surprised. Like, So I was in the weight room, finishing up my weight room. I was like, man, Sarge, I don't know. Maybe we should just go back to the hotel and not even watch the final. I was like, my buddy called me, Eric, from Ireland, my old teammate. He said, yo, Travis Scott's here, bro. I was like, what? So said, Jack's here? I said, all right, man, I'm heading there right now. <laughs> then I went there, and I sat um, right next, like, behind the section. Like, he was in the section. Did you behind. know that? Like, you I didn't picked know that? he was there. Like, I, I mean, I knew he was there, but I didn't know where he was sitting. I stood up, turned around. <laughs> like, yo, that's Travis Scott, bro. I was like, yo, you didn't say anything to him? He said, no, nah, I didn't say that. I was like, yo, Jack! <laughs> Jack! Because, you know, they call him Jack is like one of his, you know, other names. But, um, yeah, he turned around and said, yo, USA team, Team USA shot put, man. Then he showed me, he showed me the proper technique. <laughs> and, then, and then I just went out there and executed the next day, you know, it went pretty good. And we were like five so, rows right. beneath you, and immediately, I think Max stood up and turned yeah. around and was like, text me that yeah, picture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I said that. That was sweet, man. I did not expect to see him. I've been listening to him for since like 2017, man. He's a he's a great artist. Something sure. that they're doing really good job, and those who aren't in stadium, 
maybe haven't seen this at home, but all of the celebrities, all the former great athletes yeah. that are here, like they're doing a really good job of showcasing, they are. you know, like who's come out to watch track and field. Yeah, man. It's a, it's a great place to have worlds, I think, man. Eugene, Oregon, I feel like it's different from anywhere else you can go in the country, you know. It's freaking beautiful out here. It's beautiful everywhere. The allergies get you sometimes. That's just me. <laughs> gets <laughs> but, me too. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's just a great place to, to come and watch track and field. I hope we can host more championships here, man, for real. So Diamond League's calling now? Oh, yeah. So um, I'm looking at Poland. I think there's a meet out there August 6th, something like that. Uh, it was supposed to be in China. But is that <clears throat> Sheshin? What, what is it? Sheshin, Poland? Sheshin? I'm not sure yet. I've heard good things if it's Cheshire. Really? Yeah, I've heard that's like one of the best meats. Another oh, good snap. spread or what? I think there's a lot of vodka after. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, someone here said about the Italian that. meat is that when you were throwing, people were say, the announcer was saying Mamma Mia? Yeah, Mamma Mia. Yeah, it, was, it was awesome. I, was like, I said it to one of my buddies from New York who said he's Italian. I was like, yo, what the hell is this guy saying, bro? <laughs> I'm like, he said, Mamma Mia, it's a great throw. Uh, man, we got to pull up that video. That was, that was sweet. It's on my Instagram, but... Yeah. yeah, it was cool. All right, Josh. Well, so Denny's again the next couple of nights. Is that, just <laughs> is that where like, we're like yeah, Stay safe, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I might try the wild. What's it called? The wild, the wild duck. duck. Yeah, yeah. I, might, I might head there tonight. Cool. We have some coolers here, too, if you okay, need a cool. pregame. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Part two. Back and wait. I'm hungry, too, man. I, I got to eat something. Hey, Johnny, get on get this guy a burger. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations, man. It's Appreciate been fun to guys, watch. Man. I've been there when you were trying to, you know. Yeah. Getting barely getting points in the SEC meet yep. and move up in the national meet and to come here and yeah. to make this team and to end up on the podium is long a, time coming, it's man. been a long time. It's neat to watch that mm -hmm. that ascension because it's it's just been a trending up for, for, for sure. year after year after year. But you throw against some of those guys and you got to have great patience yeah. and, and dedication and yeah. and uh, they, it's amazing to watch. That, they don't make it easy, man, but they definitely bring the best out of you. Yeah. yeah, so that's why I love competing for this country, man. Gave you the the bronze. Watch out for yeah. yeah. Watch out for you could say bronze medal. <laughs> All right, Where are you gonna put your medal? Um, I don't know yet. I might give it to my mom when I get home, and she might do something with it. Nice. Hey. I need to get my flag though. I haven't seen that flag since they took it off before the uh, medal ceremony. And yeah. I know there's some good prize money for, uh, you know, Man, getting a medal. I didn't even know. Well, really? at first, did you get my Venmo yesterday morning for the victory lap? I did not know. <laughs> I didn't see that either. <laughs> you didn't see that one Yo, either? I'm trying you to tell you. Good start to the day. I, I mean, I knew I was getting something, but I didn't I didn't see the Venmo. No, not yet. But I'll check out. <laughs> it's not, it doesn't compare to what yeah, I think World but, Athletics has given you. I mean, I knew there was prize money here, but that wasn't even on my mind. Man. I was I was locked in all week, man. It's, it's crazy. So we, uh, just before, like, so you, we were twenty two twenty four yeah, to start. Yeah, twenty four, and then twenty one seventy, and I think like a twenty one fourteen, then a twenty two twenty nine. Yep. No, no. Then a foul. Then a twenty two twenty nine. And my last throw was twenty two twenty two. Man. Call me, call me twenty two day right now. <laughs> <laughs> You're getting a lot of uh, people in the comment section here telling us to ask you about Rocket Rocket League. Rocket League. Yeah. Asking that, man. Yeah, they're like, <laughs> why do they know things they shouldn't know? I mean, Ask them about Rocket know. League. Rocket yeah, League. I play Rocket League a little bit, man. It's pretty <laughs> fun. Um, I'm not the best. That is a very. It takes a lot of skill to be good at that game. A lot of hours. I go on. You know, I'm a, a recreational player. You know, I'm not out here trying to start any beef with anybody. <laughs> that game gets pretty. Oh yeah, yeah, he's got what is it? Phase Atlanta 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 Phase. Atlanta Phase. Atlanta Phase. It's an esports team. Some esports oh, yeah, team. Oh yeah. That's yeah. cool. <laughs> I didn't know that. Now do what do you have some what's your do you have some kind of what's your name when you're on? So like do you, 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 you want to give it a tune? Is it something cool? Nah, it's nothing cool. It's just Tune Day. It's T U N E D A Y twelve, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> tune Day twelve. Yep, for sure. Very cool. Well, yeah. we appreciate you stopping by. We know that you probably got a lot of text messages yeah. and people calling. And yeah, so Plus, there are a lot so of and so there are a lot of places that are open now that you can get to, <laughs> yeah, so you don't have sure. to end up at Denny's. Absolutely, <laughs> going to Wild Duck tonight, man. Tell them to be ready. <laughs> Good advertisement Tell for the duck ready. tonight. Yeah, they better have an extra bartender on staff <laughs> 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 and somebody to hold open both doors because <laughs> that, that one door is not very big. You need, to, you need somebody to open both doors to walk through with those shoulders uh, for sure. Josh, well, appreciate you taking the time. Thank you. Thanks again. This is awesome. Thanks. Awesome. All right. Very little bit. So it's like a podcast or yeah. what? Yeah. 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 We've been having 1,400 Joe, people watching here. Yeah. Oh, so are we talking to wait till Joe gets here? Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll right. talk while Joe. Uh, Joe might be rolling through any minute now.
because um, those guys ended up. So we get three shot put medals. Oh, yeah. Last night, Grant and Trey bring us a couple of hurdle medals. Uh, Katie and Sandy, right? We get two. Yep. Medals in the pole vault. The other finals where we have uh, the hammer, first and third, and the hammer mm -hmm. with uh, Janae and and Brooke. So I mean, is that is that is that the nine of them? I think so. I think so. That's yeah. still. And Grant, and the most exciting might have been Grant Fisher trying to chase down. I know. I, we're so close. Yeah. That, it, you know, it's funny. We were talking a little bit about this on the podcast and how we think the American fans do a really good job of looking at the context of athletes and knowing, you know, hey, you, maybe for some people, fourth, we'd be disappointed. And, but for Grant, out kicking Selman Borrega, the Olympic champion, yeah. you know, that was an awesome race. And uh, I, I think that we've got a good medal shot in that five. Do this. Uh, help me understand because we didn't quite get to it yesterday. Because I think I do, yeah. but, but for somebody who's put in the miles, to run 24 laps and then bust off 57 and change or whatever it was, or 50, yeah. I mean, that's, that's absurd. well, the last half was 153. So 53, mm -hmm. right? You close 60, 53, four. This is, this is the best way I could kind of describe it. So those guys can run that pace of maybe 64, 65, 66s all day. Just keep going. And right? so for, you know, it's one thing to get in a time trial race in the start of the season and just, you know, really be, you know, getting from the gun and going. For those guys, it's about how fresh can I be with one lap to go? And they are very close to like, they're surprisingly fresh. And so it's almost like those first 24 <laughs> laps is just to set the stage, right. weed out the guys who are not ready. But, and I, I think it was Chris Zielinski once did a, a, in an interview saying and describing and Chris basically was the first, first, first American, American first under non-African to go under, under 27, 27 right yeah and he said you know I was at a world championships and he realized you know with a K to go those guys are still jogging and so <laughs> if you want to compete with those guys on that level that's what you need to do and I think Grant is more I think he's there to the mm -hmm. point where he's with a lap to go it's like all right let's start the race and now it's just a matter of just getting that one two steps quicker and then he'll be there but we i asked him at usa is like what can you run for an open 400 and he was saying he's done it in 50 he thinks maybe he can do 49 53 is dangerously close I tried, I tried to, and I tried to, yeah now that he's eaten something you want to get and you, and you need to be you need to be in that race a couple of times that's the other thing whereas and you can do that in a 1500 because you're running that up but you're not in that race in a 10k you only have so many in you and you're only in so many with that kind of quality so it's hard to really duplicate that and until you've been in that fight 100 percent. and when grant ran 26 33 earlier in the season he did it by himself you know he had some teammates helping him and mm -hmm. then he finished off the most important yeah. part of the race you can run completely un unobstructed here you have six seven guys at that pivotal moment <laughs> in the what race are these guys still doing here and they're elbowing you they're <laughs> spiking it's like you're jostling in and out and you're running at a really quick pace dealing with that and so that is an acquired ability to remain calm in that chaos mm -hmm. to be able to sprint i mean in the 400 in the open 400 like you have your own lane like there's guys going on around you but right. you don't have to legitimately like literally be weaving in and out of guys to mm -hmm. find your spot and so it is something that it, it takes some time and as you said there's not many opportunities to be in that position so every year that grant is in that position one more he'll be one more better at it do you want to bust out the the wine and get Grant up, back on for a little bit? Uh, you can ask him if he's ready to have yeah, a quick one. You're ready? good. I'm good. What'd we eat? I gotta go. I gotta go see Gil at three, so it works out well. Who are we going to see? Gil Diva. Oh yeah. That works out. That's right. Cause we gotta we gotta we're going up top. We got thirty minutes. We're going up Let's top. Get some wine glasses. Get some so wine we'll glasses have him. Gone. You can tell. So what do you usually at home? Cause you usually you usually are almost like a smalia. You're recommending things to people uh, on your on your <laughs> social oh. media, right? So Rye actually recorded me the last one. I actually or, ordered one back at the house. Who's this, Rye? Rye Benjamin. You guys are, aren't you guys? I thought you guys were feuding. Are you beefing? Uh, we can be. <laughs> if it helps. It, yeah, exactly. Whatever you want to, whatever you want to add. Look at this man. Look at this man. <laughs> <laughs> look at him. Anything you got to screw the top off, I'd be leery yeah, of. Yeah, no. I, when you got to screw the top <laughs> off, you're like, you're like, oh, uh, okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. This is a Manischewitz. 
a man of Shevitz 21. Yeah, exactly. You no, so what do you usually, what do you, what do you, is there a go-to or do you have something that, that you like that you, that you know um, well? Um, definitely, uh, a Bardo is, is a good go-to for me. Um, mm -hmm. uh, Marlowe's pretty, pretty, pretty well as well. But it's my favorite, right? The yeah, yeah, okay, good. Yeah. My favorite one is the Chateau. Definitely, yeah, hands down. Sponsored. Definitely. Yeah. And, uh, A to Z Wine Works, uh, yeah, for the Willamette Valley, so they're fairly and how close much, by. How much? Uh, how how much is too much? Like, because in your training, right? Like we have like depends on what you're doing. It depends on what you're doing. The next day, I've done it before. It's not. It's not smart. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. 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 World Championship. John, are you in or no? I am not a wine drinker. I'm just okay. going to sit and admire right. you guys who are. So. Cheers, ladies. We've got a spare for all of that. You want? You want John's? <laughs> there you go. Cheers. I'm I'm a giver. Don't mind if I do. Yes. So yeah, the Copal is nice, right? I, I've, I've a, heard a lot nice. of these. I, I, I have that. Did you? All right. What, what kind of notes are we tasting here? <laughs> What's our impression? It's definitely um a little kicky, kicky. spicy. <laughs> you like it fruity? No, I like a smooth, smooth with an intense finish. Okay. This one's this one's kind of um, definitely could taste a little bit of cork. <laughs> Definitely tastes a little bit of. It has like a smoky, like smoky, flavory note at the end. I wish we had the prices that we paid for you. <laughs> that one's definitely probably like. 20, I can actually pull it up on my app. It's probably like. I'm you saying, got an app? Yeah, oh. a Vivino. That's easy. Okay. Where's the bottle? There you go. It's A to Z. Pinot Noir. All right. Get our next one geared up. A lot of pressure. Okay. Getting this on camera. Yeah, yeah. No, you don't want to mess that Just up. Just keep turning. You got a regular corkscrew. You got one fancy one. I got a fancy one. Yeah, I, I'll struggle with that one. I won't even lie. I will. I will struggle with that one. <laughs> I asked Grant beforehand if he was able to do this in under 13 seconds, and he said no. I wouldn't yeah. be able. Have you ever sent a wine back at a restaurant? Like if they brought you out the bottle? No. <laughs> I think that takes way too much. Oh, yeah, uh, it takes too much time to do. <laughs> Right, because they do. They pour you a little bit, and you sort of go, "Oh, this is great." And everybody always goes, "This is crappy. Take it back. Mm -hmm. Open me another bottle." You're Viola, wrong. three point seven. Bottle 3. was 7. the bottle was. Um, so you bucks. just shoot the label, the bottle, and it just. Yep. You can buy it right now at. Have you picked a race before? Locally, like, we'll like, say oh, right. locally. locally. <laughs> three point seven, eighty-two percent match for me. So you had one thousand reviews. Thirty dollar bottle of wine. That's not. You guys aren't cheap at all, are you? You guys are bringing it in. We so want to shout out to our sponsors. It's light, smooth, <laughs> dry, and very acidic. Very acidic. Has oaky notes. That was the. That was the. Uh, the cork. cork I tasted. Yeah, yeah. Earthy. Black fruit, spices, yeast, pears, citrus, and floral. <laughs> all right, here, shoot this one. Papa Joe. I'm gonna. I'm gonna get to make way for these two. I'll let you guys I go. <laughs> I can borrow your shirt. I'm, I'm gonna make. I'm gonna make way. All right. Uh, I will make way here for Joe. You guys handle him. That's your boy. Oh wait, is John taking off? I think John is gonna. Uh, John, you can. You can take this one. And okay. Here. I'll slide over there. You want me to go in? Come on in. Yeah, come on in. Yeah, take. It'll be good practice in case maybe you have some sort Joe, of come hosting on in. gig in December. Pop, Papa Joe. <laughs> That's, is that me? Was that you? That's, that's you. That, oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is that's live. You? I love it. This is, this is definitely a live show. All right, now we welcome on right, my boy, the there. Olympic silver medalist, the two-time world champion, and just added another medal to the collection, the world championship uh, silver medalist, yep. Joe Kovacs. Joe. Papa Joe. I uh, appreciate it. Thanks for being here. John, <laughs> I'm going to take your spot. I'm going to be the mediator right this now. Is, this, is, this is your audition. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You want to get Josh back in then? <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll tell you, uh, I'm excited for last night getting the medal. Most importantly, for sweeping for the first time ever in the U.S. history. And I'm most thankful to Grant over here because uh, I, couldn't <laughs> got, I, I couldn't have gotten that medal without him. And uh, somehow I fit in. What is, was that a lar that's, that's XL? Extra large. That was an extra large. That was missing four X's for me. Uh, there oh, it so, is. Uh, I told you. Wow. Yeah, I, I told you. So somehow we got that thing on. I think that has more views than any of our performances from last that's night. That's very on, true. Uh, on Instagram right now. But a uh, big thank you for that, Grant. Hey, man. That's what, that's, that's what family's for, baby. That's I, what family's for. I'll tell you, I came out and they, they said, where's your jacket? And we didn't make the full lap around mm -hmm. like we normally do. And uh, I never got to pick it up in the stands and because of that 
I looked at Grant. I was like, hey, man, do you I mind? I need it. No, do you, you it? absolutely can use it. Look, I'm telling you right now, I'm going to frame that damn jacket with your, with your bib that I'm going to get from you. I'm going to frame it. <laughs> and I, I hopefully, some, I'm, I'm hoping somebody has that moment on uh, as, a, as a Kodak film right now because we could definitely, definitely use it. Yeah, well, so where does the friendship between the two of you go back to? What do, what, what do you remember the first time you guys were both, was it both on a, the, a team together? Yep, so for me, it started 2019. He won. He sent his shot put back to Africa. 2292, <laughs> right? 91, 91. 91, 91, excuse yeah, me. Yeah. 2291. And I just honestly think we, I just mutual love, you know, just bouncing off each other. Obviously, his wife is a hell mm -hmm. of a coach. At, she was at Ohio State. Now she's at uh, Vanderbilt. So it's just one of the things where I just think we just bounced off. When I was still a part of Rose Gang, um, he had bought some shirts to, to help out with the company. And, you know, that was that. was that. Was that. Were you a big throws guy before that? or like? I mean, I'm, I was just track and field fanatic. Mm -hmm. So it just I, I watched everything. And then for us to both win on the same day, I just think it just it made it that more that much more special. 10,002, like you're a full track fanatic or? I mean, I know Grant. I got I got I actually have one of Grant Fisher's bibs, so I can still say yes. I want to ask about this more. So you normally go around and you trade bibs or you collect yep, bibs? I collect bibs. So like from all competitions, from the first place finisher to the 12th place finisher i collect bibs all the way through so like i have bibs going back from 2017. so my goal at the end of it all is to basically make like a a, a wall of all the bibs that i have so i just go out collect them and trade and sign and all the good stuff joe do you have do you like get bibs or jerseys do you ever trade stuff you know what it, it is one of those things when he says that it makes me mad because like <laughs> I, because, because I, i'm like i'm like well, i'm kind of pissed off that i didn't do that earlier in my career so now it's just like oh man i'm 10 years in like like i, I wish i kept all of my bibs and then sometimes you know in europe somebody asks for your bibs you give it to yeah. them and you're just like oh man I, if i would just kept all those i could have made my wall i could have traded them even the key cards from going to every hotel that's overseas, actually smart that's oh, actually it's smart. all those things you think about like oh i should have done it so tune day you got yeah, your first big medal I'll, I'll 22 you, meters <laughs> yeah, I think, uh, uh, country. Bib, but you gotta start collecting bibs too yeah, because don't I'll be like me that. and be like man have 10 years of regret right for there sure. this morning i came down for we're doing group runs every day and i came downstairs and i was wearing a kenya jersey that i got from the world relays like back in my day and chris immediately is like you gotta go change <laughs> <laughs> i was like what he's like tracksmith is hosting the group run you can't be wearing a kenya yeah, jersey yeah. You you go, night, right? go change i was like this guy sucks <laughs> <laughs> that's cool so joe this this particular medal i mean you've got a bunch of them what it, how does this one compare to, to the, some of the others yeah i mean of course you know like the first one was gold it was awesome but through the years the ups and downs i think it's like every time you do it, it's different and your yep. perspective is changing and like obviously doha was a huge moment for ash and i just because i was essentially going to quit in 2018 and be done with the sport and things weren't going well and it was this roller coaster from being at the absolute low in january to being at the absolute high in the world championships in october this one this time around of course i wanted to win the gold but to be able to duke it out with ryan throw some big throws i think for the first time i've heard hayward that i remember being hayward I mean, the fans were crazy. They were they were super excited for us. And hats off. I think Ryan and I have talked more about Tune Day than ourselves because <laughs> because we're so excited to be able to finally do it. Because uh, we've, we've been talking about so, so the, long. The camera shot. Look at this. The camera shot. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> I mean, come on over. <laughs> you get in there. Yeah. <laughs> I'm about to say you should, you should see yeah, Joe dude, next dude. to me. Like the camera shot next to me is gonna be crazy too. That yeah. is the crazy. Yes, camera. That's angles. Now, yeah. now it looks now like I'm probably little, the bitch. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> good time. Hey. All right, but, uh, Joe. But hats off to uh, to Tune Day. You know, the U.S. shot putters. We bragged how we're the best shot putting nation every year. We always have the stats to prove it, but we never have pulled off the medal sweep. Yesterday, we finally did it to do it at home. Tune Day coming out with big yeah. throws in round one. I mean, it, it's so many times we could have, should have, would have. We yeah. actually finally did it. So that 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 is truly special to all of us. Yeah. Congratulations. I was thinking about, man, a couple of weeks ago. I was just talking to my, my roommate. I was like, bro, how crazy would it be if we swept the shot put? Like, it's been a possibility for years, but I had to go in there with the mindset to just stamp it up, man. I knew you guys would take care of business, but I knew I was going to have to have a big day, man. I just wanted to do that for you guys. And that's legendary. 
It well, is. I appreciate that because I'll tell you today, like I got a text this morning from Adam Nelson, who is like oh, wow. my hero in the shop put. So like, I mean, heck, Adam was like my wallpaper on my computer when I like first got a computer, and like that was like who I looked up to. And mine then, like, was I Reese heard, with the turkey leg. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that now nowadays I'm looking a little bit more like Reese than Adam, but uh, no offense to Reese on that. But like, it's been cool. I heard you say it yesterday, but you gave credit to Ryan and I for pushing the sport, and now you got to chase it and like. It's, I think that's what it's all about. I yeah. think the only reason I'm doing what I'm doing is because of Reese Adam Christian, John Godina, yeah, sure. Ryan Whiting, those guys before us. So For if sure. we keep on pushing that level higher, it makes it a pain in the butt to go to these championships and have to throw <laughs> a championship record or Olympic record to win all these times. But that's ultimately why the sport's getting better. So let me ask you this, Big Joe. Going into this, going into this meet, what was your mindset? What was... What was what was your mindset? What was your keys to victories as a, as a defending champ? What 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 did you what were you like? All right, if I do bam bam bam, I can walk out of here with the gold. Yeah, I think um you probably understand this. Like you, Absolutely. I, I'm a little. Oh, you have to explain I, it. I'm more <laughs> I, I'm more ticked off, and and I had that feeling of it's not that I didn't win yesterday. I think I was ready for a bigger throw. Obviously, everybody's gonna talk about the warm ups I had that were far, and that's that's a common thing in my past. I hate all the laws in between. And yesterday's competition, we had more than ever because the time we use a new camera system to measure now rather than the laser that camera system takes almost a minute and a half two minutes to register so a shop at competition used to normally take maybe 45 minutes it took almost two hours yeah. yesterday yeah. so i don't do the best with those laws i found a way to still do okay with it and through the second part of this of my life but like i think i was ready for a pr i think i'm ready to go 23 and change and that'd be nice to kind of finally get over that but Ultimately, that was what I was concerned on most. But whatever medal I got, I wanted to make sure we came home with a medal. And I was hoping for a PR. I think I was uh, two, two centimeters away from it. So I got to get back to the drawing board. Uh, I apologize to Ashley on that one because she had me ready and I, I, I didn't get it all the way through. So uh, hopefully, the, the next couple of meets, we finally get that done. Oh, yeah. So last night, I didn't get the chance to ask you because of, we talked to Tunde about this a little bit about just like the dynamics of the actual competition where. Uh, you know, Ryan turns his back and doesn't watch you throw, and then you watch his throws and then go and do these 10, 10 yard or whatever it is blowouts in between these throws. What, how intense does that get? Yeah, you know, it's um, Ryan and I are very different. We throw very far and sometimes really similar to each other, but you know, he's six eight, six nine, and I'm I lie and say I'm six foot. I'm not. I'm I not. That too. I'm I not. That too. So uh, I'm. Uh, I mean, I try to say I, I'm throwing more off the elastic stretch. And I'm trying to catch that big rebound off my body. Mm -hmm. And um, Ryan's throwing a little bit more off leverage and timing. So it may look a little similar, but like I'm doing those crazy running and trying to sprint to stay, stay warm and stay in shape because I can't cool down. Uh, Ryan can kind of, I think, sometimes play it cool and chill, and he can build his rhythm slower, um, and he can keep that consistent level. But it, it, it's just a it's different, way, different way to get there. And, Is that uh, why you like the... The smaller condensed time for oh, a Oh, heck yeah. yeah okay, that, that makes sense. Two day knows that if, yeah. if I had to pick something, it would be like 90 going. degree weather, good yeah. weather. It would be hot as heck, sweating, and uh, be like four people in the four comments. people in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. Just fly through it. Fly you know, through it. Yeah, nobody ever wants to be the practice hero, but like, you know, I probably have the farthest practice PRs of anybody. So it's one of those things that's annoying because we just got to do it when it counts. Yep. Joe, how bad do you want Tunde to stay on the podium with you guys, at least until you're done, right? I never want him to leave because I mean, <laughs> I, I mean, it's it's truly it's it's and like I want to sound the best way saying this to Tunde, but like you did it at a high level. You did on your first throw, twenty two twenties. Like it, it it wasn't a nobody showed up. You threw twenty one fifty because everybody was in there, and that's no disrespect to somebody who throws twenty one fifty, but. If you're you now you're a 73 foot shot putter, yeah, like yeah, that that's real. How's that sound? That, that's, that's, <laughs> that's, that's far. That, that's a re, that's, that's a real level. That's a real medal. That's that's in front of you. Beat some you beat yeah. world champions yeah. and Olympic. You medalists. gotta remember who's who so, was in the competition too. That's what yeah, makes sure. it even better. Yep. Yeah. So for for me, there's like you know there's a lot of boxes that were checked yesterday for you, yeah. and it makes us excited because like you not you're not going backwards from that. Uh, I agree. Appreciate that, man. Big thing was just mindset going into it, man. I mean, like, men being mentally prepared, like, this was, like, the first time I actually prepared my mental to be ready to go on my first throw. You know, usually I'm a last throw, best throw kind of guy. Even going back to college, SECs, like, I broke the SEC record on my last throw, you know, and I threw a meter further on my last throw. So it's just hard to kind of get your mind right to prepare to go early in the comp. But I learned from, from 
Tom and, you know, seeing Chase do it the day before, man, it's just, just kind of really fun. So what is your mindset going into competition? This first major yeah. team, right? Yeah, yeah, first oh, major other, team. Oh, other than indoors. indoors We're on indoors yeah, together. Yeah, yeah. So let's just say second because indoor doesn't yeah. get the credit it deserves, but it's still a medal. Sure. Okay, so second major team. Yeah. You got, you in your head, correct me if I'm wrong, you're like, damn, I got Ryan Krauser and I got a defending champ. Yep. Um, on, sure. I'm on the team with. Yeah. And Tom going, Walsh is yeah, there. Exactly. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> going into this for comp, sure. what 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 are, you, what are you telling yourself? I mean, what what are, what are your keys to, for for victory in, I mean, in in this in this in this aspect? Going into the comp, like ever since he was saved, I was looking at this comp like the Super Bowl. Man. There it is. Like, you know, like okay. everything I did was geared towards to win. You know, I mean, of course you got Ryan and Joe there. Yeah. But, you know, I'm not. I'm comfortable with like my placing and throwing my best. I just wanted to be at my best, even if I didn't win. I just wanted to be at my best on the day, and I knew I could walk out of there with my chest so high, you know. So mindset was just stay focused and get it done on throw one. My coach has been telling me that for years there on end. But, I mean, I've never really executed it to my best ability. So just going in there and getting a the good throw, round one, putting the pressure on everybody else, having them trying to respond to it, I think that's the best way to go about it. But the one thing with that, you got to stay prepared throughout the whole competition. Man. You can't let up. You can't let oh, off that, the gas, oh, man. Because somebody, change. especially when you're throwing against Romani and Walsh, those guys are seasoned vets, man. Romani just won indoor worlds this year. Like, he could pop a throw off at any time. So that was the toughest part in between throws, like Joe was saying, the lows that we had, just trying to stay mentally in the game because it could go south real quick. Yeah. I'll tell you something else, too, they did that, you know, we're not going to talk about because we were talking about yesterday. So Tunde had a little pec injury where there was something yeah. going on. And this is something that, like, when you talk about the whole scheme of things, you know, you're supposed to be in Prefontaine. You mm -hmm. pull out of Prefontaine. Yeah. You're supposed to go to some Europe meets. You pull up Europe meets. Yeah. So, and we know the sponsorship world and money in the throws yeah, isn't what it used to be. And if anybody wants to step up, go ahead and do it, right? Tunde is right here. Uh, <laughs> but, that's but, why you're on the City of Smack podcast right now. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but sure. but if, you, if you are, you have some opportunities like Prefontaine and stuff like that, where yeah. you, get, you have the opportunity to get some money and you turn it down to make sure you're healthy, for USA's yeah, and the that's world, that's a hard thing to do, yeah. and that's a mature thing to do. And I, I think confidence level. I think too. all of us sure. thought that was very impressive to be like, listen, I would love to go scrap some money right mm -hmm. now, but I'm gonna heal up my body and then come out, and you you got the medal for it. So yeah. I, I think that was a mature decision. And it's cool that it all worked out for yeah, you, and really all of us it. in the shop at world mm -hmm. saw that happen. So that that's a different mindset. That, Joe, how did you celebrate your first? Uh, Global Championship medal because have you heard how he celebrated his? <laughs> no, I wasn't. You weren't there. You didn't get the invite to Denny's last yeah, night. Are you right? Hey, did he? I went to Denny's by the hotel yeah, yeah, after I came back. Right by, I don't think you noticed Oh, I was. Yeah, I was, was. I was just crushing French toast there. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you should say hi. Oh. Uh, I saw we saw Ashley when we walked in, but we walked straight to the bar. You didn't know there was a bar back there. Oh, I saw the bar behind yeah, me. Yeah. yeah, no, I was crushed in French toast. You were at the bar. <laughs> Joe said I had to yeah. eat first. <laughs> we had a little different cool down. He was he was at the bar and I was at, I was at the French toast. I had, I had two uh, French toast slams and uh, <laughs> and I went back there this morning too. So yeah, we went there, man. Had a good time. You left and everybody like all the throwers came right after you left and then it was just like we were there until two thirty. Oh man, I missed the party, but I got yeah. the, I got the carbs though. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So, uh, Joe, I guess we were talking earlier, and you know, Tunde was getting advice from Ryan in the middle of the competition. When when did when do you guys stop giving him advice? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's one of those things. Like the the throws world is a very unique one. I think in the sense of it's it's that gentleman's kind of fraternity game of like. I'm going to try to give you everything you can because I still think I can beat you. Mm. You know, it, it's a little bit like you're cocky and saying that, but like that's also like. It, it, once you're in the ring, it's just like what, what Tunde does in the ring, that's on him. It, whatever he can do to throw that far, I got to find a way to be better than that. So, like, I think it's cool to give each other advice. I think, you know, even in practices going up into this week, you know, I saw Tunde throwing pretty well with a light ball. I was just like, hey, that's his indi indicator yeah. of whether you're throwing with that 14, and that's probably yeah. what you're going to throw the 16 in the comp. Actually, yeah. Right, right I around. I threw the 16 before I threw the light ball. Oh, so you were. Threw, yeah, I threw 22 with the 16 that day. So you knew you were ready. Yeah, you yeah, knew yeah, you were ready. Right. So, like, I saw he was ready. I think I saw Ryan practicing. So it's one of those weird things. It's just like. I, I'm not, we don't get as petty. I mean, sometimes, especially Tom Walsh gives some digs to Ryan and gets under his skin. And, and that's kind of entertaining for us. But it's one of those things like, hey, if you're going to go out there and do it, like you got all the respect in the world. And then if I'm going to give you some help along the way, hopefully you give it back one day too. I was getting really jacked up when I just saw uh, Ryan's throw, but then immediately just kind of looked for your reaction. And you just were looking into the stands, I'm assuming at Ashley, and you were just pointing one. 
Yep. Yeah, one more throw. Yep. All it takes is one. How did you sort of go like, you know, to you don't want to force it, yeah, and you don't want it to be a bad one. How did you try to like, you know, kind of channel all that energy, knowing that this is your last chance for a gold medal, and it, it yeah. didn't happen, but but you wanted it to. Yeah, I think it's always like the, you know, everybody, especially in a technical event, is going to have that like kryptonite Achilles heel, and for me, it's to be relaxed and not go limp or soft on the throw. And like being relaxed is being long and being and, and, and flowing, and that's what you want. That's where the big throw comes from. That's why my warm-ups are going to go farther. But sometimes I have the tendency to, when I try to relax, I take the heat off. And that's even worse than anything. So for me, I tend to over-rev the engine too much and guarantee a medal sometimes. But man, there's sometimes if I could just take a breath and flow and that's what i was trying to do on that last flow and it, as soon as i put the ball in the neck and i jumped the gun out of the back i was like it's gonna be good but it's not it's not it's not where it should be and that's one of those things as, as a shot putter in a technical event you kind of know right away yeah, i was just about to ask you that know. i was yeah. just about to ask that when it, so long jump when i'm coming down a runway this way back when three years ago <laughs> don't, don't, don't feel bad um coming down a runway you can kind of feel like, all right, yeah, this is about to be a good one. And then yeah. you get on the board, and then you basically go into the sand. When you get ready to throw, is that the same thing? Like, you know when, you, when you're about to spin, you can just feel it come off your hand, and you just know. Yeah, for sure. It, it, it's uh, I, you, I think in this sport, and especially, like, being a veteran at it, you can find a way to make a bad throw. You can find a way to – I call it power alley. So anytime I throw down the right sector, I can find a way to throw a fastball 71 feet. And that gets me in the finals almost every time. Mm. That doesn't get you a gold medal. But, yeah. like, that's great to have the power in my back pocket. But anytime I throw down the right sector, if you guys are watching, that generally means I didn't cross the ball. I didn't stay on it long enough. I wasn't relaxed. Don't know what none of that throw. means, but keep going. So it, but if you're watching that sector and you see it go down the right side, you're just like, ah, Joe's jumping the gun. You can just oh. know that right away. If the ball's going down the center, that means I stayed on longer. If I cross the center with the ball, that's a PR. Really, so, and that's just wow. kind of the way I throw. It's, yeah. And most of us are kind of all the same way as right-handed throwers. Yeah. So the the generally the more down the right sector, it's like you you didn't get th completely through the ball through the swing if you put it that way. Oh yeah, I've yeah. never heard that before, and now it's something I want. Look, to Look, you learn something new every day. I'll tell for anybody who watches who hasn't watched the shop at much of it. That's a good thing to watch. And the ball in the air. If you see somebody's ball in the air spinning like crazy, they missed it like they missed it <laughs> completely. Yeah. So sometimes you see it coming off and spinning. You're like, oh, is that a good throw? It's, you want that thing like a knuckleball. That's what I was, yeah. that, That's how you know you hit the sweet spot and it's just kind of cruising and then you we're probably already screaming and yelling because we know it's good wow. do you guys feel and, and joe this is probably the best question for you do you feel like in the last five ten years that the attention on the shot put is really you know like you guys got center stage yesterday for a while and the whole crowd was into it do you feel that momentum in the event behind you of like the fans now really being into it yeah i think it i think it's it's getting better and better and it was at a really good level when i first came on the scene with the the big three we call them christian Cantwell, adam nelson and then there was kind of this transition year where people still cared about it but now we kind of have the consistent characters in it where you can follow. You, Ryan and I are making it. Now we have Tune Day with the medal. So, like, I think you're getting more and more people excited about the shot put. They're understanding it. It's at a level it's never been. When I threw 22 meters for the first time in 2014 and won nationals, I was the 22nd guy in history to ever throw 22 meters. Wow. Now 22 meters is, like, common. Yeah. It's, 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 it's a common thing. So, like, to see where the sport has – when I started from, like – you know, if you're a 70 footer, you're a big deal. Now, 70 feet might be 22 meters at 72 feet. And like, it's just becoming more and more. And you know, I've had now multiple throws over 75 feet, which is, you know, if you told that to me in 2012 or 2013, it would just blow my mind yeah. that yeah. people are even throwing that far. And now we're kind of doing it almost every meet. Do you believe that just like the sprints, do you believe the throws is evolving? Like 23 is going to be the norm soon? I don't think 23 will be the norm. Um, it'll still be a big throw, but you're you're going to see it more often. For you're sure, right. you're going to see it more often. And we won't go crazy about it. It'll just be like, oh, he threw 23, or will it still be like, holy shit, he threw 23? I think it's going to be. Um, I think it's going to be like, oh, he had another 23, 23 mm. throw. Okay, it, it'll become more common. I I think the the biggest difference I see from the the past is not just like the level getting higher, but the consistency of the level. Because like I'll even look back and. 
no sled to the throwers in the back, but I remember showing Ashley in 2014, we watched the, I showed her the video of Prefontaine here and we brought everybody in the stands down to watch the shot put. It was really cool. They're like, we were on the Friday night, not the Saturday. Oh. So they said, everybody in the stands, the distance racing is done, come down, they surround the shot. So I pulled up the video to show Ashley. It was like, it was so cool. And like the, you know, there were world champions with 19 meter throws in their series, like three or four or five of them. Like, and they still threw far in that meet. Nowadays, you don't see anybody with a series that even drops off at all. Wow. So it, not only is it just the big marks are coming, but your, your, your average level is at such a high level that you can't ever take, you can't ever take a day off. Yeah, it was interesting to hear <clears throat> Josh talk about how he grew up watching you guys on like YouTube. Yeah. But uh, Joe, I don't know if, if you know the story of Joe. Do you want to share with him just a little bit of like the, what was it, the, the videos that you used to watch? We, we've talked about this before um, of how you got into the throws as well. Yeah, for sure. I mean, like, I, I didn't know anything about it, really. And, and I, I, Chris knows a lot of this, but like I started as a way to stay in shape for football. And then you kind of have to stumble upon your way. My mom became my high school throwing coach. And then you find somebody who knows a little bit more and then you learn from them. And then... You know, I was right around that era where you had access to the internet and, uh, you know, seeing these guys like my, my hero was Adam Nelson, but Reese Hoff at the time and all these guys like traveling the world and like, you know, you don't mm. really know how they're making a living, but you're like, they have a house. Like yeah. they're, they're, they're doing okay. They're professionals and the intensity they brought to it. It's, I feel like it taught my generation of throwers so much. And now I see my wife being a college coach, all those throwers already have 10 times more knowledge than we ever had in college. And you're seeing the depth just get higher and higher. Open it all. And I think that has to do with the social media era. I yeah. think sometimes it kind of bites you in the butt sometimes because people think they can just coach themselves online. But like the access to seeing the high level throws and the high level competition is just it's more and more out there. What was the name of the video? Is it Monster Throws? The YouTube video? Yeah, I was. Uh, oh, let me think of this. I, I still haven't saved my greatest thing. throws. Yeah, I'll tell you that the the funniest one of that is my buddy Blake and I in college. There is this one called the the best finish throwers, and we thought they had the the best like <laughs> the, the best like oh you know Lord. finish of the shot put, and they were screaming like crazy. It wasn't until two months later that two we ends. realized they were all in the same jersey, <laughs> and they were from Finland. They didn't have the best finish on the throw; they were the best finish throwers. So that one was pretty bad. It took us two months to realize that. One. But uh, yeah, we, we felt pretty uh, we felt pretty bad about that one. We both got our degrees though, so it was, uh, <laughs> that's all that matters. Yeah, yeah. That's all that matters at the end of the day. Yeah. So I I thought we were we were I didn't realize we were throwing a party and just to the number of guests that we've got. So we've got guys who throw far. We've got someone who runs fast. Now let's let's merge the two together. We're bringing we're bringing Cam on. Yeah, bring we're bringing Cam on. on. We're going to bring on uh, Cam Levins, who is the Canadian can national spot. record holder. Oh, Grant's got to get going. Grant's got to get going. Oh, go. go. All go. right. All right. Miss Gil Divas. Ooh, okay. oh, that's cool. Yeah. Cam, Cam, take a seat. Well, actually, let's get hi. one. Johnny, can you get a quick group photo of, of, of all the guests here today? Here, Cam, oh, Cam, take John, a seat. Come on. John, get in the photo. Nice to you guys. Good to see you again. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So Grant's gonna trade seats so with Grant. Cam. Thanks for your time. You, you gave us you gave us like an hour and a half, two hours hanging take out. Take a take a bottle of wine no, you, with you, you on the way out. You want me to yeah, yeah. You can, you, want. you can leave the medal. You know, it's yeah, good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if you have any extra apparel too, I, I guess I'm taking everything from you. <laughs> there you go. Cam, we'll get you here for a sec. <laughs> Cam, how, how are your legs feeling right now? Like it's been 24 hours, a little over 24 hours. 24 now. hours since finishing fourth in the marathon, Canadian record 2:07. Tw what was the official time? 2:07:09. 2:07:09. All right, so we are just about 24 hours later. How, how do the legs feel? Pretty terrible. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what What is it like post race after that? You know, both. I guess, what has the reaction been first and foremost? Um, I, I've. I mean, the amount of support I've gotten after this, like, I, it's been crazy. It's been really just, like, humbling, honestly. I uh, have been in sort of obscurity, I think, for a while, and I think deservedly so. Um, and so I, I just the amount of people that have come up to me and been like, oh, I've been, like, a longtime fan. I've followed your career, like, really closely for all this time. And, like, you know, to know that support has been there the whole time, even on, like, the lowest lows. When the highs happen, it feels really good. 
So. Well, I think that's another thing I saw so much of on social media yesterday. It was just like the joy around your finish was stemming from a large population of people who remember that, you know, flow track video in 2013 or 14 when they came out and they saw you out in Utah. And it, then, you know, afterwards you're doing interviews after this race and you're telling people how many miles a week, how many, what were you averaging this time around? It was one. Hold on to hold, uh, be ready for this. Yeah, get, ready for <laughs> get ready for this number you're about to hear. Uh, how many miles? Uh, I, I hit about 170 to 180 miles oh most week. God. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't drive that much. Really, yeah. really. Yeah. I mean, but it was it was sort of like for a lot of people, it's like, oh, whoa, like this is the Cam Levens that we remember, and it's just so good to see back. Like, did you feel that you know yesterday? Uh, yeah, I guess. I mean, like I I feel sort of the strength that I used to have. I think, yeah. as an athlete. Um, I'm, but I mean, like. I think a lot of people see that number with mileage and go like, oh, that's why he's running really well. But, you know, to be... There's so much more to it. Yes, there's a lot more to it beyond that. But, like, the mileage is associated with me, so I get that I say that, and that's the thing every person latches onto and gravitates to. Mm -hmm. yeah. So what is it, I guess, you know, besides just the mileage? What's going so well this year? Um, I would say the biggest change from last year, I mean, being one of the last finishers in the Olympic marathon to one of the top ones this year is... Um, I'd say the weight training has been like just massive change. Like over the last year, I've just like spent so much time in the gym. Tunde awesome. benches 507, <laughs> Joe squats 800. Yeah, oh, 200, 200 more than that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. So yeah, what, what are your notes? No. <laughs> so that's been, that's been something that has kind of made you feel more regular again? Uh, yeah, I'd say that's been like, it's really balanced up my body, like being I think I'm only able to handle the kind of mileage I'm running again, really because I've done that as well. And I mean, I've, I've really just like took every aspect of my training and went like, what can I do to get better here? Um, because like the best athletes in the world, like they're doing everything they possibly can. And like, even though I felt like I was working super, super hard, yeah, you have to be willing to take it to such a level beyond what you think is hard, I think. Something that's interesting is, I mean, the, the, difference between you two sitting next to each other you know like it's probably a oh, good picture yeah <laughs> well, this, this, is, this is the cool part because this, yeah. this is the extreme end of our sport right like, that's yeah. what i mean but yeah. and then especially i mean when you're running 180 miles a week you're probably eating calories like right up there with these guys like how do you even keep your body able to keep functioning at that level yeah it's funny you say that i mean this past um I mean, like last few months, especially like, yeah, my metabolism has just gotten to a crazy point. Like it feels like I'm just like doing everything I can to keep weight on <laughs> instead of having some concerns of like getting to a, you know, a perf perfect race weight kind of thing. And so, yeah, just like it's a very different experience than I've been in, in past years. Because I think there's there can be a tendency for athletes, distance athletes to be like, I need to be as light as I can be to you know, compete with the best guys. And instead I sort of found that like, I'm just getting there and I'm feeling at my best while I'm just trying to maintain the sort of caloric intake. If you want to go to Denny's with these guys, I think they'll take it. Yeah, it's, it's a good spot. <laughs> so Cam, like you, you mentioned sort of like how you've been working kind of in obscurity is how you, you phrased it over the, the last year or so. Again, sort of like not as flashy on social media, not posting like a whole ton. Can you kind of update us as to like what, what that road to, to get to this point has, has looked like? Um, well, I mean, on top of changing my training, I actually had some pretty uh, rough Achilles issues since the Olympics. Like I really got, I think, messed up at the end of uh, just trying to finish that Olympic marathon. Um, and so it's been kind of a slow recovery process just from that to the end of last year. And I really got to the beginning of this year. And um, I think that was kind of my like come to Jesus moment where I was like, okay, do I go into this as hard as I can with everything I have? Or am I, am I you know, am I finished? Is, do I just mm -hmm. retire and I'm finished with the sport? And um, I, just spent the last six months kind of slowly building up, um, you know, looking at it month by month, being like, you know, when I get to the half year or get to this point of the year, the world championships, like, what is it going to take to be ready to run at my best? And it's like, the journey from that has been a very slow, slow building process, but I, at least 
when I got to this point and got to the start line, I was able to say like, there's nothing else I could have possibly done. You know, the quality, maybe, well, I mean, the quality certainly can, can, can continue to improve because that's what's going to help me become better in the future. But from a workload standpoint, this didn't feel like there's anything else I could have done. So Tunde, this is, you know, similar position for both of you guys mm -hmm. being unsponsored, showing up to the world championships. Yeah. Does that feel like a new set of pressure for you to like say like, no, this is the opportunity here, yeah. you know, on top of just the pride of wearing your country's uniform? Yeah, I mean, I know sponsorships are kind of hard to come by right now in the throws. And uh, I've kind of been professionally thrown for the past since 2018. And uh, I don't know. I don't know if I've just gotten used to not being sponsored. You know, I was at the Olympic Training Center for two years, and that that was basically a sponsor of me living on site, having my meals, having my coaching, everything paid for. But since I've left back in 2020, man, I've been working a lot of jobs. Man, I was a bouncer at a bar. <laughs> I've been working at Sornex Equipment Company, you know, helping them make fulfillments and stuff like that. And uh, I was doing everything I could to get by and just trying to get to this opportunity for me to place high and hopefully get a sponsorship. But um, yeah, I felt a bit of pressure, but I just tried to live in the moment, and I knew if I just put the work in that, you know, hopefully good things will happen. Yeah. And Cam, like for you, it's been a little different, right? Because for for years, like you went, you know, you signed out of college, professional contract, and then you know switched sponsors later on, and so this is this has been a, a block without one, right? Yeah, I spent um, a year back in 2017 on sponsor. Okay. So I mean, obviously nothing like your situation. In yeah. fact. You're not a bouncer at a bar. <laughs> <laughs> That's a one bar I could cause trouble in. <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but uh, both times have been fortunate uh, that, like, my wife works a good job. Mm -hmm. I've, you know, I've been a kept man, a trophy husband you know, <laughs> over that year and then this last half year as well. So that's been really fortunate. Um, that's awesome. So there hasn't been at least a financial stress, but I mean, there's certainly the stress of feeling like, how am I contributing? How am I contributing to this family? Like, um, like, am what I'm is what am I what is what? Sorry, am what I? <laughs> Did you run a marathon doing, yesterday? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> is what I'm doing like, you know, worth our time kind of thing? Um, so you know, there's there's that difficult aspect, but you know, it's been a really nice experience being able to try different shoes and finding kind of what I've, I've mm -hmm. like, you know, being in Nikes for just a long period of time and then being in Hoka's for a long period of time, I haven't been able to try other shoes too much. And actually, the first time I was able to try these like super shoes, the, the Alpha Flies was in May of this year. And I used them for the first time and like the first workout I did and I'm legitimately, I was like, I can't believe I've been competing against people that are wearing these things. I'm like, the difference is <laughs> insane. <laughs> um, like, because I'd only ran in Hoka's once. And I mean, like, they're certainly a good shoe, but I didn't have any frame of reference to compare it to. So that was, that was certainly amazing. How close were you when you said you had to make this decision? Do I go on or this is where I stop? I mean, uh, those are real adult discussions that you have with your spouse and, and, and try to come to that conclusion. Um, I think it was a matter of deciding, like, what do I want out of my career still? And, like, is, you know, if I stop now, would I be happy with what I've done? Or would I be disappointed that I didn't try and put everything I could in? And I think that's when it came to the moment of being like, well, you know, I don't think I've given everything that I can. You know, and I wanted to at least be able to say that, walk away from my career at the end and be like, I really gave everything that I possibly had and have no regrets, no matter what sort of hardware or whatever comes out of it. And obviously, fourth place, there's no hardware for it. But, you know, I'm, I'm a winner in my heart. Sort of, you know. <laughs> Ours too. Well, so Kyle and I were, were, were talking about this last night and just sort of, you see some of the names like on, in the results from the marathon and there's guys like Joffrey Camor who can, you know, command like maybe a, a good, good appearance fee in one of these fall marathons and even you know, someone like yourself, but like what goes into the decision to run the world championship marathon where it's like, there's no appearance fee. Uh, there's some prize money, but it, I mean, you, you do get to represent your country. And so for you, was it, you know, did the Olympics and, and the performance their way into this? And so why, why, why do the world championships? Um, well, yeah, a number of those things, uh, I would say the main reason is like I, I really 
a big goal for my career now is to, trying to get like a world championship medal, an Olympic medal, and you know, the marathon at the world championships is another opportunity to try and do that. And I mean, I think that's comes or sounds more legitimate out of me now than maybe it did going into the world championships. But uh, I think I'm at a point where I just want to take every opportunity I can to try and get that medal. Mm -hmm. And um, on top of that, I just ran so poorly at the Olympics the year before that I wanted more experience in this kind of championship race because it's such a different experience than like any other sort of marathon you run like you never have I mean in this case 70 guys that can all run together for half the race um, mm -hmm. like can, it, almost no matter what pace you go at a, a large portion of guys all can pack in together and um, like I can only try this basically once a year at best at these world <laughs> championships or again every four years at the Olympics so did you expect it to be this fast um, I knew the course was fast. I knew the conditions would be quick. So it was really just a matter of how fast the race went up. Mm -hmm. So just, uh, you know, I, I think it's really a cool dialogue that we're having right now. It's super unique, especially, you know, having Grant here previously, hurdler, throwers, marathoner. Mm -hmm. Just to put in perspective before I put these guys on the spot, you know, because you probably have some questions for a marathoner. Yeah. But <laughs> so just what was the average pace that you ran for 26.2 miles? I don't know. I, so you, you, you operate in kilometers. <laughs> Yo, yeah, that's true. I did. I've done like all my training in kilometers. It's, it's funny. Yeah, I've switched to the miles, going to college in the states, switched back <laughs> to kilometers again, and so I'm just all mixed up. But we should have our intern calculate it. But it's yeah. like you know, you're you're running sub five minute miles for over two hours. Like it's an incredible thing. But then Jeez. to have you guys <laughs> wow. sitting here and we're talking together, yeah. isn't it like? It's wild how many similarities there are across the different events and the shared experience, despite the events being probably on the two most opposite sides of the spectrum. Well, I mean, I as as I hear Cam, I think of Joe and the conversations we've sort of had over you know the past couple of years, where you you have those moments where you're like, I I don't want to do this anymore, and and but then you experience things like you know this World Championships or the Olympics last year that it it rejuvenates those thoughts so it's like I want to keep doing this yeah I think for me the hardest thing and I think it probably I'll speak for all of us is it's opportunity cost it's not just not having a sponsor in the moment but it's I'm taking this year away from another year I could have in a career or an experience and then something else in my resume so like that is always weighing on you even when I've had successful years getting medals it's like well what if I had these years in another industry that I was building upon. And then like the longer you do this, the longer those opportunities seem farther away. So I think even when you are doing well and maybe you hear you get a sponsor, or you're getting a medal, you're just like, you know, you have your family members looking at you like you're still doing this thing, yeah. know. you know? You like watching yeah. me on TV, don't you? Yeah, like. for sure. <laughs> it, it, it's cool. And it, it's also, you know, um, I think that all of our sports changing and like what peak years were for that. And the shot putters, they used, to, they used to say 32 is the peak year. I think it's actually getting higher and higher as we go. We, we stay healthier. I know marathoners are finding a way. I mean, I know Meb well, and he found a way in his later years to do very, very well. So I think it's like the you have these distrib dispositions of what you should do, and then you should be done. And then all of a sudden, like, you know, I, I just, I've had this, the, the, this two, the second and third best meets of my life, the past two meets. And I'm like, well, everybody's like, hey, you're still doing this. When are you going to be done? It's like... <laughs> You're telling me to be done, and I, I'm in a really good place right now. Like, <laughs> you know, if I was 10 years younger, you would say they have 10 more years in your career, but nobody's saying that to me now. So mm -hmm. I think that's the hardest thing. You're just kind of weighing that back and forth. But that's the hardest thing. By the way, if you run five minute miles, that's like a 210 marathon. Five yeah. Minute, yeah. 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 So that's he went 210. 451 was the official pace for 207. Four fifty one miles for 20 oh. miles. Oh. miles. But it is that's that's the <laughs> universal thing across any sport as the guy who sits there at 57 gets to call all of them, is when you are done, you are definitively done. You don't get, you know, whatever that, that time on is. If you're Tom Brady at 44 or if something calls you at 23, like those days run out. Like that's a finite career. Right. Computer programmer is not a finite career. Yeah. Broadcasting is not a finite career. But you guys have, in terms of being elite, a finite career. You, right? you can run till you're 70, I guess, if you want. <laughs> but but that, but but that those years they, they do come with a cap, yep. and so that's why everybody. When Grant said, you know, I'm gonna wait till somebody says, "Hey Holloway, you know, you're done. You should, you're washed. You should go." 
okay, that's fine. I'll go right till then because to give it up any sooner to me seems to be really dumb. You only get, you have this gift and you only get it for so long before time does snatch it away. Why wouldn't you go? If you can go to 38, God bless you. You know, in which case you're a pup. <laughs> I think yeah. the thing that's tough is these peak moments are always like a year apart from each other. So there's a lot of time in between to just think, you know, in the marathon, you guys race two marathons, maybe three a year. And so it's like, what do you do between that? You're like, well, what am I doing? You know, fortunately, the shot putters, you guys sometimes are competing every few days. Mm -hmm. And so you're getting that constant reminder and that adrenaline. Yeah. But if you don't have that positive reinforcement pretty regularly, then that's when those like dark thoughts start to kind of creep into your head. You can't can compete more often, but how often can you compete at that level? Because I do think beyond the, the uh, physiology is fine, but I do think mentally that you can't go to that well all the time. There are people that argue with me and that say, listen, if you're physically ready to go, you're physically ready to go. Um, but I, I don't know. Do you, what's yeah. your thought on that? Like, how often can you go to the well as it were? Well, it, it's cool you say that because, I mean, the well is so different for yesterday's meet compared to the next Diamond League I go up to. Because, I mean, like, there is another one. And I might throw farther at the Diamond League than I did yesterday. But the well of the stress where you kind of have to tap in, go to that dark place and, mm -hmm. and put that all that focus, your eggs in one basket. You realize that every time you have an opportunity at one of these majors, it's a life changing moment. It extends your career. You know, Olympic medal gives you at least another four years. And one of these world championship medals gives you at least another. I can justify another quad. So like every one of those comes with that stress. And for us as shot putters, I think we can throw far all the time, but <laughs> when we go to these meets we are peaking to make sure that our minimum level is high enough that it's not a bad day so i think even under some heavy loads in the weight room sometimes in my best training it's just like wow i could throw pretty darn far right now i could throw a 22 mid but we're doing so much peaking to make sure that like we don't have a day under 22 because then you don't come home with a medal so i think that stress and going to the well it's different through the year. And I think having the opportunity that we, I mean, we used to have a lot more opportunities overseas and, and going to track meets, but it's kind of nice. Like I did, I did uh, five meets in a row after pre-Fontana. Pre I did, I did pre Ostrava, Poland, Poland, Rome, all in a row. And I haven't done that since I was in the early part of my career. And it was fun. It's really fun just to go back yeah. to back to back. I threw far at all of them, but the joy I had at that wouldn't have helped me at all yesterday. Cause yesterday is, you know, you, you feel the pressure. It's so interesting, like you can say, you can throw far all season. Cam, you probably have days that you wake up and you can't break three hours in the marathon, right? Like, <laughs> it's a, like the highs and lows of a distance runner. I'm sure in just this buildup alone, there were some serious lows along the way. And then the days in which everything clicks and it all culminates in this one day, one time, you know, competing five times in a row. That's obviously never going to happen. So, Cam, do you, I mean, especially spending that much time like out there just running, like how much do you love this? Like it's your job, but it, like there's a joy that comes to it. Yeah, I I think um, the joy is really in competing for me. Like getting into the last ten kilometers of the, this race and being like I'm running running with the best in the world, and I get to like pit myself in like all of us just gutting it out. Like that's that's what I live for, you know. <laughs> and so um, it's I think it's tough when it's like that's what I'm training for, and then. I race these marathons and I don't get to get to that point. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm sort of done before I get to the part, part of the race that I really, really love. And so um, races like yesterday, it's like, oh, that's everything I could have asked out of it. You know, I, I got what I needed out of it, um, regardless of the result. So that's like um, the hard days. I at least get to think of that and be like, you know, this is going to get so I get to enjoy my day even more mm -hmm. when I'm here. Did you run today? <laughs> <laughs> I barely was able to move today. <laughs> when will you run again? Uh, <laughs> Tonight. <laughs> because we have a group run with, uh, yeah, and Malcolm Gladwell is actually <laughs> stopping by on one of them. And I was like, we're finally going to be able to maybe get this moment with, with Cam and, and Malcolm being spotted <laughs> in the same place at the same time. <laughs> yeah, see, there's no confirmation we're different people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean... Uh, my coach told me like, oh yeah, just take a week off and then like maybe start up next week. And I'm like, I don't know, man. I, <laughs> that still seems a little quick for me based on how I'm feeling. But um, I guess that's the tentative plan. We'll, we'll see how the body I will ready. say that about uh, Mary Katani, who's won the New York Marathon how many times. And I asked her, you know, in those really hard moments, 
when you decide I'm either going to really push through, like what goes through your head. And I expected to think, I think, and because you get a lot, I think of all the people that have supported me. Those are people behind me. I think of all the, 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 the support I've gotten. And she just said, I think tomorrow I have the day off. Like that's, that's what goes into her head when it's really, I just think I'm going to run really hard because tomorrow I don't have to do anything. Does that enter your mind as well? Like you're saying, you know what, tomorrow I'm, I, I can just stay in bed if I choose to do that. Um, I mean, there's certainly the aspect of training to be like, well, I know all this hard stuff that I do today, like no matter how tired I'm getting through it, at least tomorrow I can just run like as right. slow as crap, you know, <laughs> like I just can trudge this mileage as slow as I want. And like, I get a couple of days off till I have to do it again. But, uh, you know, at least I know next time, like I can kind of go through that again and again. I don't know. What do you guys do in your off season? Um, you know, I feel like you guys, the shop owners, probably travel way more. So sometimes in your off season, you just want to sit at home. Sure. Can you like do you travel? Like, what uh, what is everyone's off season plans? I, I think uh, a shop owner's off season is actually like that's when I'm, we're in the trenches, maybe more, um, sure. because that's when we got to build the engine. So really, like our fall, and I call the fall training, but it really goes through as I normally skip indoors through February, March, that first training block. Um, that's where like, you know, you're just beating yourself down in the weight room. It's all about just building mass, building strength. You just want to be the biggest engine on the block because by the time you actually start caring about throwing, if you have the power in the back pocket, there's nothing better than that. So that's the kind of the year. And, uh, and luckily, you know, my wife's my coach and she sees the good and the bad of it, but like, like the central nervous fatigue is a real thing. You start putting the orange juice where the plates go. And everything's <laughs> wrong. And then you're, 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 you're staring at a tree that hasn't moved the whole time. And, you know, that, those things happen. I mean, I don't get muscular sore as much as CNS fatigue real bad. Uh, that, that real off-season part, that's a uh, – I wish we could enjoy some things more yeah. often. But uh, that's where, like, the meat and potatoes really happen for us. Yeah. How is that? Is there a separation between wife and coach at times? Like once you got home, it's like, all right, we're out of the weight room. Well, like, she's always the boss. <laughs> okay. so, and, so, and you've like, got so, a weight room in your house. Yeah, too. I have a weight room in the house. And, uh, you know, I think it's it's worked so well because it wasn't something that like an issue with, like, oh, I'm coming to you coach me. We, that was, had nothing to do with it. But, you know, our relationship just kind of grew to it. And she's super smart and she knows a lot. And she saw me making mistakes and was able to kind of put me in line. And, you know, at this point in my career, I know how to do a, a lot of things but she stops me from doing the things that I don't need to do. And like going down the rabbit hole, I'm notorious for this. I always think that I can find a better way than I did yesterday. And I think that's something that has made my career good over the years because I can make something boring, exciting, but also means I can start doing something that makes today temporarily good and then two weeks from now we pay for it. And she's been keeping me in line um, since you know the 2019 season of Doha World Championship. So, I mean, I'm super grateful for that. What's your off-season plan? Denny's? Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'd say I'd take like a, maybe maybe a month out, depending on when I end the season. Last year, I ended my season September 14th. I think I was in Croatia. Yep. I grew up. And then I had we had a good time in Croatia. Too. <laughs> <laughs> that was cool. But, um, yeah, they treated us good out there. Remember the uh, the goat that the, the, the lamb. They, the cut, lamb they, they cook us the lamb. That's every, every shot putter's favorite meat is yeah. the Zagra meat at the end of the year. They have us the day before the comp. It's in their street center. Yeah. And then the people in the town, the mayor comes, mm -hmm. and they, they, they slaughter these lambs. And they cook them all <laughs> yeah. day for us. Mm -hmm. It's like this huge ordeal. So for yeah, if, you, you don't really feel like you're a professional shot putter until you get through Zagra. So that, <laughs> that, that's cool. kind of the, the rite of passage. Yeah. Yeah. Great way to end the season. And after that, I had to take maybe – I had a little too much fun out there. I had <laughs> a week off of doing nothing, and then I started, uh, you know, slowly getting back into it. I think uh, I ended up taking a total of four weeks off. So I got back going, like, mid-October. And then, like Joe said, I'm spending the off season like, starting heavy reps, you know, a lot of volume, just trying to build the, build the engine. Like Joe was saying, uh, I feel like most shot putters have the, a similar look or approach to our off-season training. Like, we're loading everything up, trying to hit as much as we can for a lot of reps. And then as the season slowly progresses, we start to like whittle down just a little bit. But my season, I did indoors this year. So I really only had October, November, December, January. Yeah, I only had about four months of off-season training. And then I had to start getting going again. But uh, I think me and my coach, we did a great job of like uh, planning it out. You know, Of course, the diet is very important during that off-season. You got to eat a lot just to fill the body. Rest is very important. And um, just getting ready for the season.
So you guys go all around the globe to throw the little ball. You're in the big ball, these exotic locations. Uh, do you have enough frequent flyer miles that you don't have to pay for baggage? Because I imagine baggage <laughs> fees with what you haul would be ridiculous. You go up to the counter and the lady goes, this is overweight. I'm going to need a lot of money from you. I'm United 1K, uh, 100K. So okay, good. Uh, that helps a lot. You get three bags at 70 pounds when you're on United. Wow. Uh, you get two bags at 50 it's when you're on the Star Alliance there. partner. So, okay. so it, you know this because it's a real thing, right? So you I, could I, rack well, up some bills. So I'll tell you, in my, I, I didn't realize what, how valuable it was until I think probably the 2014 season. And I did what's called a mileage run. So like, I wish I knew then like what I know now. So I had this whole Excel sheet and I was so close to getting the 100K status. And if you get the 100K on United, at that time you got six global upgrades, certificates. And I, if, I, if I wish I would have calculated it out sooner and I should have just taken a vacation somewhere. But I was already in like our fall training and my coach didn't want me to leave. So I flew from San Diego to, I left on like a Tuesday night, like six o'clock. I had my buddy Eric drop me off. I went San Diego to San Francisco, San Fran to Boston, Boston, Seattle, Seattle to Newark, Whoa. Newark to Houston, Houston to Dulles, Dulles to L.A., <laughs> L.A. back to San Diego. I was back at Wednesday around 8 p.m. So essentially I was like in a hotel in the sky for 25 hours. Wow. And I paid $380, 400 bucks for it because there's like these forums that these guys help you put these segments together. And it sounds crazy. And it was, it was actually kind of enjoyable. I just, I streamed a show on my iPad. I got upgraded for the long haul. But so, but essentially everybody made fun of me for doing this, but I had six global upgrades the next year. So when everybody who made fun of me was getting on the plane to go to the same meet and I got the upgrade to first class, I had a big smile on my face. This is like Jan in the bus. Yeah. Did, did yeah. you guys hear about the, the kid who took a bus from Tampa Bay to oh, Eugene, Eugene, Oregon, oh, I, but I Greyhound the, buses the whole way. That's that's wow. impressive. That, that, yeah, that's, that's, like that's even worse than what I had to do. Running. I, don't, awesome. I don't know if you got any I upgrades I at least got complimentary drinks. So I mean, that's... Uh, that's well, there's pretty, that. Pretty and, then, and then you also, your, your dream is still to fly yourself to a, a meet right yeah i know i gotta check that one off the list so mm -hmm. I, I have my my, pri my private pilot's license and um the i always like arnold palmer used to fly to his own mm -hmm. tournaments and like that's always been one of my things like there's actually this meet, meet in memphis and i don't actually think i'm going to it the but that would be pretty easy for me to go from <laughs> I, i'm in i'm in uh I'd probably be about an hour flight or less so yeah. that would be a good one to check off the list you're gonna so. go to bandon dunes for you lee what'd you say you're gonna go to bandon dunes before you leave no, you should go out there and hit it that'd be real fun oh, that'd be man. real fun I would love to do that. Cam, off-season plan, and then fall marathon? Is that in the cards? Um, Take my clubs. So it's okay. like these guys said, there's just like not much of an off-season in like this sport, really. I mean, like if you want to be one of the best, it's pretty obvious you need mm -hmm. to be able to like spend almost as much time as you possibly can being prepared for you know, this one day, basically. Um, but we uh, are planning on like for the first time after living in Oregon for like 10 years, we're finally gonna like do a small little trip around it for a few days here. That's kind of our like vacation. Um, but besides that, it's like after a couple weeks, I'm building up again for the next thing. Um, it's really, and that's mostly just because like, that's how much time the body's gonna need post marathon mm -hmm. before I even really can start doing any anything. Uh, so yeah, and fall marathon plans, I, I mean, I have nothing yet. I They'll actually be knocking. They'll be knocking. <laughs> I actually really wanted to do the World Half Marathon Championships. I, I did the Canadian Half Championships about a month ago to make sure I just like that's gotten pushed back like seven times now. Yes, it's exactly. Cancelled again. <laughs> uh, it's just not happening, which is unfortunate. But like that just got canceled a couple weeks ago, right? And I was yeah. like, mm -hmm. well, I'm not figuring out what I'm doing until I get at least through this marathon and. That was just yesterday, so I don't know. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm with Kyle. I think the major marathons might be calling pretty t uh, sometime soon, so that'd, that'd uh, be awesome. that's exciting. I'm just going to chime in. My next thing is the men's high jump over at the stadium. I'll yeah, see everybody. Really appreciate you. Yeah, no, actually, we enjoy it all. Yeah, I think we're going to yeah, kind of John. wrap up the show because we've also got to get out to the too. stadium. Sure. He so he loves sports in the, uh, King the Blue Jays. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He loves sports. Thank this, you. This is the, the most viewers we've had the entire day, and I hope it only continues to he grow. But sports, also, like the most diverse cast of, of guests, and it was it was a ton of fun. So, um, Josh, Joe, Cam, I appreciate you guys taking the time to, to sit down with us. This, oh, some unique conversations the last couple of hours. It's been really fun. It really well, opens your eyes to just how big the sport is. Well, I appreciate you guys having us, and I think it's cool to you know 
when you have the marathoner sitting down next to the shot right, putter, that's right. a spectrum of the sport. And that's the beauty of what track and field is. You know, it has a little bit of everything in there and yep. everybody has their own place and we can follow them when we need to, but we come together for the fun, the fun times. Joe said it best. And so we'll be back again tomorrow at 1 p.m. Uh, with more guests. Uh, we've actually got to go and pre-record uh, an interview for tomorrow. We're actually sitting down with uh, Seb Coe. Oh, wow. um, okay. So Our if you guys... Our second interview with him. We second, did one yeah. a number so, of months ago. Uh, if you guys have any questions for Seb, like what, what, what should we ask him? Um, my biggest question, and then like, oh, is, it, is this about Devin's reaction? No, I okay. mean, and that's a whole other thing <laughs> I won't get into. Is um, my I've I've seen a lot of the, the pro athletes have talked about on the circuit on the Dime League. I know the Dime League is going to get revamped with a new TV deal soon, all that kind of stuff. Is um, there are so many more people who are pushing for having our events kind of broken up and separated. Like example, like a throws festival compared a distance festival. You have the relay festival that can kind of take off. Is that something that, that he's interested in? Because I, I, I think it's great that our sport comes together for these championships to bring the marathon and the shot putter together. But, uh, you know, we always get complaints in the throws that nobody's there to watch the throws. But we've had some really successful throws festivals where we're actually getting, you know, thousands of people and we're getting people at strength competitions who want to bring the shot put into it. So I think it's one thing I, I wonder if he'd support that kind of breaking up especially in the now rankings being so important. Mm -hmm. You know, if we put a big throws fest together, can we still get those rankings? Because it's not, a, it's we're hurting somebody who wants to come to our event, but they still need to go to somebody else's events to get the rank. So yeah, that's there's a, a fine point. line to how to do it, but it'd be really cool if we could pull it off. We want to announce the big throws fest. Yeah, like we're going to host the Sidious Mag big throws guy. <laughs> big throws guy. <laughs> and then before, uh, well, Cam, we go. What's your question for Seb Coe? Do you have anything? Oh, um, I just wondering what do we need to do to get more track 10 Ks, just oh. like high quality ones, right? I because it feels like it's going the opposite direction, and you don't want that. Yeah, I mean, like I was looking to maybe try and get standard earlier this year in the 10 K, um, and so I went and ran Peyton Jordan, ran like 27.50, and I was like, okay, that's like a good start. And I'm like, well, actually, <laughs> there's no other opportunities to do it again, so that's that's it. But like, you see how I saw how exciting the track 10 Ks were at this championships, like. More of those would be pretty great. I do say we had some conversations earlier, and now it's very funny. We're advocating for 10Ks shot put, and I feel like, you know, the shot putters want more TV time, and the 10K fans and athletes don't want it to get cut away. And it's just like, there's a way to do both. We don't have to pick and choose. We can definitely have every. I, I think it's, it's, it's your audience, right? I mean, and I think that's where you have the TV people. You have some people are coming to watch his 10K, then you have some people who come to watch Tune Day through the shot put. So I think it's a. Uh, I think we separate those up a little bit and have a little more focused distance stuff. I love watching them when they duke it out. I'll, I'll tell you my favorite race every year, and like it, it's not at these, but it's the NCAA regional meet. When you watch people duking it out for 12th place, yeah. that's, that's the most fun. So if we had some of that, you know, people talk about our competition get boring because you see you only care about one, two, or three, but sometimes like how Formula One has done it with Drive to Survive and you're excited about the middle of the pack, that's how I'm excited about watching those regional meets. Who's going to duke it out in the middle? Whoever wins it, hey, you're already yeah. in. So I think you can make some things pretty fun. All right, you guys come with us. Meet Seth. Yeah, yeah. All right, we're, we're, good. Good. we're good. All right, but thank you so much. Thanks to everyone who tuned in and watched. Uh, we'll be back again at 1 p.m. tomorrow. We'll air the Sebco interview. We've got another interview with Maurice Green because he knocked on our door, and he was like, <laughs> I need to talk to you guys about my uh, the 100 and how I was right about things. And so um, we've got Michael Johnson coming up in a couple days. So uh, hit the subscribe button. You don't want to miss these interviews. Today was, today was really today cool. Was fun. So uh, thanks, everyone, for watching. Sweet. Thank wow. You. That's good.